Episode 41, Step Back. Lucia was staying on campus to play video games with Cole and avoid having to confront Dalen, when suddenly Cole nudged her. What? She asked without looking up. He poked her again. Lucia had no choice but to look up and she saw a figure standing outside the window. She was stunned. She put down her cell phone and walked out of the classroom. What are you doing here? Come have a meal with me, her father said calmly, showing none of his anxiety. But it had been a long time since her father had done something like this for her, so Lucia was immediately suspicious. Did I do something wrong? Why, do you think you did something wrong? No. Lucia shook her head. Lucia went to eat with her father with all kinds of thoughts swirling around in her head. They ordered their meal and started eating, and finally Lucia started to relax. It seemed like everything really was normal. Lucia was still a bit suspicious, though. This was the first time since she'd left for college that he'd come over to have dinner with her. Could it be that he was in a bad mood? Is everything all right, Dad? Are you going to divorce Barbara? Lucia asked, hoping for an affirmative answer. All she got was a cold and detached look from her father. Apparently, he was not going to get a divorce. Lucia did not dare ask any more questions, lowering her head as she ate. You really don't like your stepmom and sister? Her dad asked. Never asked me that before. Why are you asking now? It's too late anyway. Doesn't matter how I feel about them, Lucia said. Is it because of them that you're so rebellious? Her dad asked. Lucia didn't think that she was rebellious. And even if she was, isn't that just part of growing up and learning to be independent? But maybe she wouldn't be so stubborn if her father had actually shown up and cared about her all along, instead of just every once in a while. It was clear to her that he cared more about Barbara and Macy than about her. She decided not to say anything, so her father continued, If you want to rebel, you have to at least have a plan. Why are you messing around with people like Dalen? Lucia froze. What did you say? Do you think I don't know anything about your life just because you choose to keep your distance? Stay away from Dalen. He's dangerous, her father said harshly. Lucia could tell that at least her father didn't know that she was married to Dalen, or this would have been a much different conversation. Oh, I get it. You're here to make sure I don't get in the way of Macy's plan to win over Dalen, Lucia said. What? I don't know what you're talking about, her father responded. Don't you? Aren't you afraid that if I get too close to Dalen, it will affect Macy's chances of marrying him? What does this have to do with her? Her father's face did not look good. Lucia continued. Then tell me, why are you so concerned about me and Dalen getting together? There are so many women clambering for his attention. Why is it so bad that he's chosen to pay attention to me? Now her dad started to yell. Do you know what Dalen is capable of? What are you getting yourself into? Her dad asked sternly. You're only 20 years old and don't know anything. In the end, this is only going to hurt you. However, Lucia could not believe a single word he said. He put on a good performance, acting concerned for her welfare, but she knew it was all for the sake of Barbara and her daughter. Lucia felt the bitterness in her heart and asked, Dad, do you still remember the dress that Mother was wearing when she married you? No? Well, I don't suppose you remember anything about her, and I know that as time passes, you will also forget her daughter. Thanks for the food. I'm going back to school. She got up to leave when her dad called out, Stop right there! Lucia could tell he was angry, but she acted as if she didn't hear him and ran out. She kept running for a long time, fighting tears, and when she finally wore herself out, she realized that he was heading in the wrong direction. She was miles away from campus. Exhausted, she sat down on the curb. The bitterness in her heart rushed to her eyes, and gathered into tears that rushed down her face faster than she could wipe them away. So she gave up wiping and just buried her face in her knees. 
She would rather live alone with her father than have a mother and sister like Barbara and Macy. Why did such a malicious woman insist on forcing their way into her family? Lucia cried for a while until she got a strange feeling that she was being watched. She raised her head and saw Jeff looking down at her. His eyes were cold and his expression was threatening. She felt as if the air around her had turned cold. Ah, oh, you're sad, Jeff said with fake sympathy. Lucia lowered her head to wipe her tears before standing up, her eyes still red. What a coincidence. I bumped into you here, Lucia said, trying to smile and keep the mood light. Wow, your smile is so ugly. Jeff said this with his usual cold expression. Lucia's face instantly dropped. How could he be so rude when she was obviously already upset? As expected, Dalen's friends were just as difficult to deal with as Dalen was. There was no mistake about it. Jeff slowly approached Lucia, who retreated until her back was pressed against the wall. What are you doing? Lucia was flustered. Jeff continued to approach, staring at Lucia's face until he was so close that she could clearly smell his breath. What was he trying to do? Jeff and Dalen were friends. There was no way he would threaten her, right? This face certainly does have an allure. Jeff's gaze wantonly traced Lucia's face. Lucia did not understand. What are you talking about? Jeff didn't say anything again and just stared at her silently. Lucia didn't like being stared at like that. Haven't you heard? You can't bully your friend's wife. Am I bullying you? Jeff asked calmly. Even the air he exhaled had a hint of coldness to it. Please step back. I wish I had a rock or something, Lucia thought. All she wanted to do was knock this creepy guy out. Just as she thought that, the corner of Jeff's mouth suddenly curled up. It was a very faint smile, but it made Lucia feel cold for no reason. Then, without explanation... Jeff turned around and walked away. Just as he made it to the end of the road, a car stopped for him. He opened the door and got in, leaving just like that. Lucia was left completely confused. What's wrong with these people, she thought. Back at the Elrod house, Macy was impatient. Her stepfather had made no progress in dissuading Lucia or creating an opportunity for a proper introduction for her and Dalen. Most importantly, Macy was afraid that Dalen would be dominated by Lucia for too long. She couldn't wait any longer. So one day, she followed Lucia on campus. She wanted to see if she had a date with Dalen or something. When Lucia walked out of her campus, Macy followed right behind her. Episode 42, Private Territory Lucia took a taxi. Macy got into a taxi behind her and followed. The car ahead skidded as it drove, winding quickly through the streets. The driver asked her, Do you want to keep following them? Obviously. What's wrong? Macy asked, puzzled. We're getting close to the private neighborhoods. We can't get in without a passcode. Just stay close to them and tell them through the gates. Don't worry, you'll be paid well. The driver, for the sake of money, kept following. When he turned onto a side street, they were immediately stopped while Lucia's taxi up ahead drove straight through. Lucia's driver nodded to the fierce-looking man in black guarding the street and said he had taken the wrong road before flipping around and heading back. After driving for a short while, Macy requested to get out of the car. Standing next to the car, she tried getting a glimpse of what was at the end of the street, but she couldn't see anything, so she got back in the car again. This is a private area. There's a huge mansion up there, the driver said with an exaggerated expression. A mansion? That's right. I've never taken anyone up there, but I've heard about it. Macy had the driver take her home and went straight up to her room. Her mother followed close behind. My precious daughter, what's going on? What happened? Barbara walked into the room and sat down beside Macy. Did Daddy not mention me to Dalen at all? Why is nothing happening? 
Macy was extremely depressed. I mean, we are talking about Dalen, after all. He's a big deal. At the very least, we must find the right time, Barbara responded. Mom, do you think I don't know that? But I saw how Dad acted when he talked about Lucia. His face was full of worry. He didn't care about how I felt about her at all. I even suspect that after he found out that Lucia and Dalen were in a relationship, he wanted them to get married. She's his own daughter, and I'm not, Macy said angrily. All right, all right. If it really was like that, then it would be all right. Besides, you don't have to go through him to get what you want. Then why can't I see Dalen? He's always surrounded by bodyguards. I can't even get close. Macy frowned as she said this. Then just go through Lucia, Barbara said with a scheming look in her eyes. What do you mean? asked Macy. As long as you pretend to have a good relationship with Lucia, you will have more opportunities to get close with Dalen. She's even more reliable than your dad. Macy suddenly understood the meaning behind Barbara's words. I mean, that could work, but I don't want to be friends with Lucia at all. I don't even want to hear her name ever again. Barbara scoffed. <laughs> Do you really want this? Then it doesn't matter if you have to make some sacrifices from time to time. By the time you snatch Dalen away, dealing with Lucia will be like stepping on an ant. Macy realized her mother was right. Once she married Dalen, all her problems with Lucia would go away. She would have the last laugh. So Macy told Barbara everything about how she tried following Lucia during the day. So she went up to the mansion? Barbara was puzzled. That's right, the driver said so. And as far as I know, Lucia hasn't come out again since she went in. Barbara's expression changed. Only Dalen has a mansion like this close to Los Angeles. Did you see it with your own eyes? I tried, but I couldn't get a good view. Mom, don't tell me that Lucia has already moved in with Dalen. Macy grabbed her pillow and screamed into it. Barbara rubbed her daughter's back. Don't worry, and don't forget what your mom told you just now. It's never too late. Macy looked up at the encouraging look Barbara gave her, and only then did she start to feel some kind of hope. She'd never wanted Dalen as badly as she did then. Later at the university, Lucia was sitting in the cafeteria with her lunch spread out on the table when someone dropped a cookie in front of her. She thought it was Cole because only Cole would buy her food this way. However, when she looked up, she almost gasped in surprise. Macy slid into the seat next to her. Seeing Macy sitting elegantly beside her, Lucia asked, What do you want? I apologize for what happened, Macy said. And which horrible thing are you apologizing for exactly? Lucia asked. I know I've treated you badly in the past. I was always against you and even robbed your things, but I hope you won't be angry with me. Lucia had been leaning back in her chair, but after Macy finished speaking, she couldn't help but lean forward as she stared at Macy, asking, You are Macy, right? You haven't been possessed or something? I know you don't believe me, but I mean it. We all really miss you at home, especially Dad even if he doesn't act like it. Come back this week, and when you get back, you'll know if my apology is sincere or not. With that, Macy stood up and left the cafeteria. She brushed past Cole, who had just entered. Cole came up to Lucia and asked, What's the matter? You're not being bullied, are you? Lucia pouted at the cookie on the table. She was here to apologize. She wanted me to forgive her. Has she gone crazy? Cole asked. You see, even you don't believe it, so why should I? Lucia shrugged helplessly. This cookie reminds me of a story, Cole said with a smile. What story? Lucia asked. The poisonous apple of Snow White's mother. Cole immediately smiled. Don't worry, your Mr. Patrick alone can take on ten men. 
He'll protect you. Oh, wait, are you actually complimenting him? Lucia asked. Cole responded, Anyone can tell just from looking at him that Dalen is built like an ox. Plus, I've heard he's got a huge dick. Lucia felt a little uncomfortable. Who said that? Well, just look at those pants he wore the other day. They were so tight you could practically see its outline. Did you not notice? Lucia's face was blushing a deep red. What were you doing looking? You can't blame me for that. It's that obvious, said Cole, unconcerned. Lucia was getting more and more uncomfortable by the second, but she had to admit Cole was right. After all, she had seen him naked, even if it was by accident. After three months had passed, if she still wasn't able to get a divorce, she'd have to deal with that fact one way or another. Later that night, Lucia tried her best to forget her conversation with Cole and focus on her homework, but it was almost impossible. She kept spinning her pen nimbly between her fingers. Tomorrow was Friday, the day she usually went back to visit her family. What if she just didn't go? What if she did? Episode 43, Holding Hands. Lucia had so much on her mind, she sent her pen and it rolled under the sofa. Lucia was about to go crazy. Even her pen was against her. Lucia had no choice but to lie on the floor and reach under the sofa for her pen. She was surprised. Even under the couch, the carpet was so clean that there was not even a speck of dust. Lucia hadn't changed out of her school clothes and she wore a sheer blouse and a short pink skirt. She had almost retrieved the pen, but it was just out of her reach. She was still on the floor when Dalen walked in. His body reacted immediately when he saw Lucia on the ground. Dalen's sharp black eyes narrowed dangerously. However, Lucia, who had her attention focused on finding the pen, didn't notice that he had come in until a strong hand rested on her body and pulled her back. She jumped and lurched forward, one hand flustered as she straightened her clothes. When he turned around and saw Dalen, who was standing above her, she was furious. What are you doing? You scared me. I like your outfit, Dalen responded with a smile. Lucia's face turned red after being stunned for a moment. Dalen stared at Lucia's bright red face, and she felt like he could read her every thought and emotion in her mind. You, what are you looking at? Lucia's ears turned red. She wished she could find a hole to hide in. Really, why was he always looking at her like this? I see you, Lucia, and you look beautiful. And I enjoy looking at beautiful things. I, I'm looking for a pen. It rolled under the sofa, Lucia said innocently. Dalen walked in front of the sofa without breaking eye contact and lifted it up with one hand holding onto the edge. Lucia looked at him in astonishment. Dalen actually lifted up the sofa with one hand and he hardly had to try. It was as if he was holding up a piece of cotton instead of a sofa. The muscles in his arm, which were covered by his black shirt, were taut and solid. Lucia ducked under the couch and grabbed her pen. Dalen then put down the sofa. Lucia stood up without a word and sat at the table, fiddling with her homework. The pen in her hand was trembling slightly. What was Dalen doing in her room? Why wasn't he leaving? She had promised herself that she wouldn't get close to Dalen. Do you want me to help you? Dalen was standing beside Lucia, gesturing to her homework that was still only half done. It was as if a mountain was pressing down on her, causing her breathing to become unstable. Lucia raised her eyes slightly and faced Dalen's imposing face with a doubtful tone. You know how to do advanced statistics? As soon as she finished asking, Dalen dragged his stool to the side and sat on it. He brought Lucia's homework in front of him and pulled out the pen in her hand. He was helping her with her homework. At first, Lucia was skeptical, but later she realized that Dalen really did solve the problem she'd been stuck on for hours. Had he studied statistics before, or was he just some kind of genius? Lucia secretly glanced up at Dalen's face, 
All his focus was on the question. No matter the angle, his face was as cold and hard as a sculpture. Lucia remembered that when she was in high school, there was a boy who helped her with her homework. Lucia was so happy, but not long after, the boy was transferred to another school. No one ever helped her with her homework again. She didn't expect the second person to be Dalen. Maybe he wasn't so bad after all. Lucia was lost in thought. When Dalen suddenly looked over and stared at her, Lucia finally snapped out of her daze and gave him a shy smile. He had caught Lucia staring, and now her heart was beating faster and her face was burning. Dalen's deep black eyes seemed to have swallowed her whole. He was devilishly charming and arrogant. Her face began to warm. Lucia exhaled a few breaths. She tried changing the subject. Dalen, can I go home tomorrow? You want to go home? Dalen's voice was low and hoarse. Yes, if I don't go back every week, my father will start to get suspicious. Didn't you go back last week? Dalen argued. Yes, but I only stayed one night last week and I snuck out in the morning. A few days ago, my father came to the school to look for me. I think he must have suspected something is going on between us. Dalen didn't say anything. He just went back to writing on the paper. Let me go back? I only go back once a week anyway, and I live in the mansion every other day. Lucia felt that her request was reasonable. However, no. Dalen said simply, as if there was no room for negotiation. Lucia slumped on the table. She switched into her most sulking, begging tone. Please, just for a little while. No, Dalen answered again. No matter what tactic Lucia tried, it would be useless. Lucia kept watching as Dalen did her homework and eventually dozed off. Her small mouth was slightly open and she was breathing lightly as if a gentle breeze was blowing. Her pink lips reminded Dalen of the color of her skirt. Dalen's pupils darkened and his breathing became heavier. He wrapped his fingers around Lucia's hand and her hand responded by opening and grabbing onto his. Her soft touch drove Dalen crazy with desire. Dalen rubbed the back of her soft hand with his thumb and held it tightly. Episode 44. Did Dalen not ask you out? Lucia eventually shifted and her hand fell out of Dalen's grip. Dalen stared at Lucia, thinking about how beautiful she was even in her sleep. He reached his hand out and gently caressed her cheek, running his thumb along her cheekbone. Hmm... Lucia sighed, as the touch started to bring her back into consciousness. Ah! Lucia opened her eyes, and she saw Dalen so close to her. They both startled and fell away from each other. Lucia was so shocked, but also surprised at how gentle Dalen had been. She stared at him for a moment before she quickly looked away. He didn't say anything, but she heard the sound of the door closing. Lucia looked up, and Dalen was gone. What had happened? What had gotten into Dalen? Lucia's face alternated between blushing and anger. She couldn't relax in front of him even for a second. He couldn't be trusted. Fortunately, she had three months to try and get out of this. No, she had to finish this quickly. Later that day after class ended, Lucia stalled for time and lingered behind. Why aren't you leaving? You can't bear to part from me? Cole asked with a smile. Well, I think my family will find out eventually. Lucia sighed and shook her head with a sad look on her face. You mean about you being married to Dalen? Lucia nodded. Why do you even feel the need to hide it? You're married. That's huge. How can you hide it from your own family? Cole asked. I don't know. I guess I think that as long as I work hard to make Dalen give up on me within three months, then no one will have to know. After he married you, did he still bring other women around? Maybe you could catch him cheating or something. How would I know? All I know is that there are women around me who like him, said Lucia. Like who? asked Cole. Like Macy? <gasps> Maybe I could try to get Dalen and Macy together. Lucia rubbed her chin as she pondered and calculated. When Lucia returned to the mansion, Dalen was not there. Just as she entered her room, her phone rang. 
Although there was no caller ID, she could tell that it was Dalen with just a glance. She hesitated before answering. Hello? I'm not coming back for dinner tonight, Dalen said in his usual deep voice. Oh. After hanging up the phone, Lucia stood there in a daze. If Dalen didn't come back to eat, then why would he bother calling her? It was like a husband calling his wife. The thought made Lucia's face redden. Dalen had important business to attend to and had gone to meet with Jeff. When he entered the office, Jeff was sitting silently in the room. He didn't make an indication that he noticed Dalen enter the room. He seemed to be lost in thought. Finally, Dalen cleared his throat and Jeff raised his eyes to nod a welcome to Dalen. When Dalen sat down, Jeff said in a faint voice, What? Are you done telling your woman you won't make it home for dinner? Dalen didn't say anything. He took out a cigarette and lit it up. With a da sound, he threw the expensive lighter to the side. His thin lips held the cigarette as he took two deep breaths. White smoke curled out from between his lips. When are you going back to the Middle East? Dalen asked lightly as he rolled the cigarette between his fingers. There's no rush for business over there, Jeff said. Noticing Dalen's indifferent expression, he said, He didn't even send me an invitation when he got married. I'm hurt. Didn't I tell you? Dalen asked casually. No, you only mentioned to me after it happened. I would like to ask, why did you marry her? Dalen narrowed his eyes and said, No comment. Back at the mansion, Lucia was playing with her cell phone on her bed. After finishing a game, she checked the time and saw that it was 11 o'clock. She yawned and stood up to prepare to wash and go to sleep. But as she passed the door, she heard footsteps. Did Dalen just come back? Lucia opened the door just wide enough to hold her head out. She looked down the hall and saw Dalen's tall figure on the stairs. When he met her eyes, she asked, Did you just make it home? What time is it? Dalen frowned. Almost 11. I couldn't sleep, Lucia answered. Well, next time you're up this late and can't sleep... Come and sleep with me, Dalen said teasingly. The word sleep made the corner of Lucia's mouth twitch and she closed the door. The next day was finally the weekend and Lucia slept late into the afternoon. When she finally woke up, she reached for her phone on the bedside table. It was 10 o'clock and there were two missed calls. Lucia had a habit of muting her cell phone before going to bed, so the calls hadn't woken her up. She looked at the caller history and saw both missed calls were from Macy. Lucia glanced at the screen and threw her phone to the side of the bed. However, just as she was about to go to the bathroom to wash up, her cell phone rang. Turning around, she saw that it was still Macy. She answered harshly, What is it? Why haven't you come back yet? Didn't you promise that you'd come home this weekend? Macy's voice sounded gentle, but Lucia was suspicious. I happen to have something going on, so I won't be coming back. I don't want to go back and forth from school. Sorry, said Lucia, rolling her eyes. Fine, Macy said, pausing before asking again. What are you planning to do today? You won't stay in your dorm forever, will you? I haven't decided what to do yet. So, Dalen didn't ask you out? He should have asked you out today, no matter what. What makes you think that Dalen should have asked me out? We don't even know each other. The lie came easily from Lucia's mouth. Episode 45. It's a date. Or is it? Lucia thought to herself, how did Macy know that Dalen and I are so close? She had denied it the last time. But Macy had seen her in Dalen's car, so Macy would not believe what Lucia said. Stop with the games. I know you're lying and I want to meet Dalen. Macy said forcefully. Lucia knew that it would be easier to just get this over with. What do you want? She asked, giving in. I want the three of us to go out to lunch together. Macy said with triumph in her voice. Lucia thought for a moment before refusing, but then decided against it. So this was her goal. She decided to humor Macy for a change. Sure, I'll send you the address when we find out where we can eat. Lucia answered and hung up the phone before Macy could respond. After Lucia finished washing up, she entered the closet. 
When she looked for clothes, she found that there seemed to be a lot of new clothes and even shoes and jewelry. She didn't notice yesterday because she didn't need to get dressed last night. Dylan must have had these brought in. She avoided the new clothes and found a casual dress and put it on. White shoes covered her feet, and she stared at herself in the mirror, surprised at how beautiful she looked in such simple clothes. When she went downstairs, she saw Dylan, who was sitting on the sofa in the hall watching TV. The live broadcast of the boxing competition was playing on television. Watching the impact of each punch made Lucia feel like the muscles in her body were about to explode. Lucia thought about Dalen's figure as she watched the practically naked men wrestle on the TV. Suddenly, the television turned dark and Lucia came back to her senses. She looked at Dalen with a cold gaze and asked, "Why did you turn it off?" If you want to see mostly naked men rolling around, I can show it to you right now. Not only can you see it, you can also touch it. <laughs> What do you think? Dalen asked, laughing. Lucia was baffled. Dalen was too unpredictable. In the end, she didn't turn on the TV. Lucia really wanted to turn around and leave, but she thought about her conversation with Macy earlier. Dalen, can I ask you, have you ever been asked out by a girl before? She knew it was a stupid question. If you want to ask me out, you already know my answer," he said with a smile. "Okay, well then, I guess I'm asking you out," Lucia said shyly. "I'll think about it," Dalen said, turning away from her. "What? What do you need to think about? You said you would say yes. Let's go out for lunch today. My treat." Lucia was desperate to get this to work in her favor. She grabbed Dalen's hand. Afraid that she'd been too eager, this was actually Dalen's first time being treated to a meal by a girl. The feeling was very fresh, and Dalen wanted to relish it just a bit longer. When Lucia saw Dalen looking straight at her, she realized that Dalen had twisted his hand around to hold onto hers. Her face turned red, and she tried to withdraw her hand, but Dalen's grasp was firm. She couldn't escape. Lucia tried twice more to pull her hand away. But failed to pull it back. Dalen's expression did not change at all, as if he did not use any power at all. Just as Lucia was about to try again, Dalen said in a low and hoarse voice, "I guess I can schedule you in, but it depends on your performance." What performance? Lucia forgot her struggle and looked back, puzzled, guessing at what Dalen might be talking about. She argued, "You said you would give me three months." Don't worry, I'm not talking about that," Dalen said with just a touch of hurt in his voice. Then, Lucia asked, "Well, you need to actually act like we're married, like I'm your husband." Lucia's face immediately turned as red as the sunset. The heat rushed to her head. It was extremely awkward, but it wasn't nearly as bad as she had initially thought. "Sure," said Lucia with obvious hesitance. Well, if you're not into it, then there's no need to keep our date," Dalen threatened. Lucia cursed silently. "What if I call you something else?" Lucia asked. "Like what?" Dalen asked. Lucia bit her pink lips, leaving a pink impression. She then blushed and said, "My darling." When the word "darling" came out of Lucia's mouth, it was so soft that it made Dalen's heart quiver. His black eyes lightened. Lucia's heart was beating erratically as she took advantage of the opportunity to pull her hand away. Dalen's finger landed in the air. There was still a warmth left on them. Okay, let's go. When they were in the car, Lucia asked, "What do you want to eat?" "Whatever you want to eat," Dalen responded. "Fine, I'll treat you to a big meal," Lucia said, trying her best to sound excited, although her dad didn't really care about her. He still gave her a monthly allowance for her living expenses. The so-called big meal was still much smaller than Dalen was used to, but it was a big indulgence for Lucia. Lucia had tried to choose a restaurant with a good ambiance. She knew if she were to treat Dalen to the kind of meals he was used to eating, she would go bankrupt. Lucia found themselves a corner booth and sat down. Dalen didn't say anything and just sat down opposite her, with his tall body and long legs. No matter where they were put, their knees were constantly brushing each other. Lucia went into the bathroom, 
took out her cell phone and gave Macy the address of the restaurant. Macy, who was at home, happily grabbed her small bag and said goodbye to her family before getting into the driver's seat of her car. If Macy walked up to their booth without permission, she would definitely be stopped by Dalen's bodyguards. So Lucia had to pretend to bump into Macy outside the bathroom by chance. Lucia didn't want to be alone in the booth with Dalen, so she squatted on the toilet and played with her phone until Macy got there. Episode 46, Read with Embarrassment. Lucia was scrolling mindlessly on her phone when she heard someone come into the bathroom. The steps didn't sound like the crisp sound of a woman's high heels, but was instead as steady as the weight on her heart. The next thing she knew, someone knocked on the door of her stall. There's someone in here, Lucia shouted, annoyed. The next second, the door was forced open, the lock breaking. Lucia watched in disbelief as a piece of metal from the lock fell at her feet. How much strength did it take to push open the door like that? Lucia raised her face angrily, but when she saw Dalen's sharp gaze, her anger turned into shock, then back to anger. This is the female restroom, she shouted. I thought you fell in. Dalen's black eyes shifted sharply and landed on Lucia's dress. You don't take off your underwear when you go to the toilet? Lucia knew she'd been found out, but she still tried to pull down her skirt. Who said I didn't take off my underwear? Dalen laughed. He came further into the stall and crouched down by her. Lucia's body tensed up, with fear but also with anticipation. The last time they were this close, they had been kissing. She looked at Dalen and asked anxiously, What are you doing? This is the female restroom. I know. I just wanted to check and see if you're telling the truth. Dalen's eyes were teasing, and Lucia realized what he was about to do. She hurried to hold down her skirt firmly. Oh, no, you don't, she said. Lucia's face instantly turned red as Dalen's hand went to her knee and started nudging her hands aside. Lucia's mind went blank as Dalen gently moved his hand under her skirt. She led him. When Dalen's hand reached Lucia's hip, he ran the tip of his finger along the seam of her underwear. He smiled up at her. It looks like you lied to me. Can a woman take a break? Lucia's voice barely managed to get words out. Her heart was beating so hard. Dalen pressed his hand against her hip. You don't like my company? He asked. Lucia didn't know what to say. All she could focus on was the fact that he was there, in the women's bathroom, and someone could walk in on them at any time. Let me go. I'm hungry, Lucia argued. Have you worked up an appetite in here? <laughs> Dalen asked with a chuckle. What? No. Lucia's face flushed. Dalen let her go and left her stall, closing the door behind him for her to get composed. Lucia stood and smoothed her skirt. When Lucia opened the door of her stall, Dalen was waiting for her by the line of sinks. He was drying his hands slowly. Lucia rolled her eyes. Why couldn't he just wait for her in the booth? They left the restroom together, and before they could reach their booth, Lucia saw Macy enter the restaurant from afar. She waved her hand and shouted, Macy! Macy swung her head around and her eyes lit up. The two of them stepped forward and greeted each other as if they had coincidentally met. What are you doing here? Lucia asked. I heard that the dishes in this restaurant are pretty good, so I came to eat. I was planning to come with a friend, but they bailed on me, Macy said helplessly. Why not eat with us? Lucia immediately said. Is that okay? Macy pretended to be nervous and glanced at the tall figure that made her heart beat faster from time to time. Wait a moment. With that, Lucia went to Dalen, who was standing not far behind her. She can eat with us, right? It's fun to have one extra person anyway. The more, the merrier. Lucia had a smile plastered on her face, but Dalen was suspicious. Dalen looked coldly at Macy and said in a low voice, you can join if you want. Then Lucia pulled Macy into the booth, placing her next to Dalen on the bench across from her. Originally, Lucia was sitting closest to Dalen. This way, the middle seat was separated by Macy, and Lucia immediately sat opposite Dalen. Lucia was proud of herself. She acted very well, as if she didn't know what she was doing. 
Dylan had been looking at Macy coldly since she sat down. In his dark eyes, there was an unfathomable chill and malice. I'm not bothering you, am I? Macy would look at Dalen with her loving eyes and ask every now and then. Nope, Dalen said. Of course, what he said didn't match what he was thinking. He tried to catch Lucia's gaze, but her eyes were lowered. After the dishes were served, Lucia tried to think of an excuse to leave. This was a perfect opportunity to catch Dalen cheating. Just as Lucia was admiring her plan, her body abruptly jerked and froze. She looked up in alarm at the two people across from her. Macy, who was still acting timid and shy, and Dalen, who had a deadpan expression on his face. A big foot grazed her leg and started climbing higher. This was definitely not something Macy would do. What was Dalen doing? They were in public. Lucia immediately closed her legs tightly, but Dalen was relentless. Dalen raised his face expressionlessly. His black eyes hid a hurricane of evil under the light. What's so exciting that your face is all turned red, Lucia? Dalen asked clearly, enjoying it all a little too much. Macy, who had been focusing on Dalen, finally noticed Lucia, whose face had an unusual blush as if she was drunk. Have you been drinking? Why are you all red? Macy asked in a concerned tone. I'm fine. I'm just a little hot. It's normal for me to get hot during meals. Lucia forced a smile and said, If Macy wasn't here, she wouldn't have let Dalen mess with her so recklessly. But she couldn't move now. Otherwise, Macy would see through her. Episode 47. Why does he affect me? All Lucia could do was grit her teeth and endure it. She hoped that Dalen was only in a momentary mood and would cut it out soon. But Lucia had never had a guy do this to her, and she was intrigued. She opened her legs a little wider, and Dalen immediately took advantage of the opportunity. Lucia had underestimated Dalen's persistence. Ah! Lucia couldn't help but cry out as his foot reached higher. Macy was shocked. Are you okay? Macy asked. It would be weird if she was fine. Her whole body felt like it was on fire. However, Lucia still shook her head. I, I think I should go to the bathroom. She tried to get up, but she couldn't without giving away the fact that Dalen's foot was practically buried in her crotch. So Lucia stayed in her chair. Lucia looked at Dalen with a warning in her eyes but there was also a sense of stubbornness and anger within them. She repeated, I need to go to the bathroom. He moved his foot higher, but above the table, Dalen still did not move an inch. He remained as calm as ever, not giving anything away. Lucia wanted to swear. Seeing that Lucia kept saying she wanted to go to the washroom, but didn't move, Macy asked, then why don't you go? Dalen still didn't retract his foot, and Lucia had to bite the back of her hand to stop a moan from escaping her. The longer Dalen kept at this, the more she wanted him to keep going. Lucia composed herself and said, I actually don't need to go anymore. Dalen, who had been silent all this time, suddenly spoke up. His voice filled the air with a low and intimidating tone. You can leave after you've eaten. Lucia thought he was talking about her and immediately said, I still need to finish. I wasn't talking to you. Lucia looked up and saw he was addressing Macy. The expression on Macy's face was extremely awkward. She forced a smile. She felt too embarrassed and unwanted in the situation. At least she was good with picking up hints. Macy didn't dare to say that she hadn't eaten her fill. She picked up her bag and said, I'm all finished. I'll leave you two to finish up. After that, she left the booth. Ugh. Lucia let out a loud moan as soon as Macy was out of earshot. She pressed the palms of her hands against the table and spread her legs wider. But that's finally when Dalen moved his foot back. That's all with my feet. Imagine if I used my hands, Dalen asked shamelessly. Lucia did her best to calm her breathing and awkwardly waved off the other customers who were staring at her with concerned expressions. 
That was too far, Dalen. You didn't even stop to eat. Since Macy wasn't here, Lucia was no longer hiding her emotions. Her eyes, that were more desire than threat, stared at Dalen. Dalen's expression changed. His dark eyes pierced her soul. You know you liked it. Lucia's face turned more red than she imagined was possible. It was like being in a world of ice and fire. Dalen took a fork and stabbed his food, lifting it slowly to his mouth. It was insanely seductive. Want a bite? He asked. Lucia shook her head. Ever since she got to know Dalen, her mind and body hardly knew what to do when he said and did things like this. Encountering Dalen's cold and forceful eyes, Lucia said innocently, I just need to go to the washroom. Don't ever try to play this trick on me again. Dalen leaned back his body. His sharp eyes shot towards Lucia's face. Lucia's body had relaxed, but her heart was still tense. She swallowed and said, What is that supposed to mean? Dalen didn't reply to her question. He merely threw out a sentence in a cold tone. If it happens again, I'll have to seriously reconsider the three-month deadline. His face was calm without any ripples, but it was as if a thousand-pound stone had been thrown over, crushing Lucia's fragile heart. Anger clouded her thoughts, and she raised her foot under the table and tried to slam it into Dalen's crotch. However, her leg was too short, and she ended up kicking his thigh. Lucia's face flushed in anger. (laughs) Your legs are too short. Dalen laughed. Lucia gritted her teeth, At least she had managed to make him laugh, and the tension dissipated slightly. The next day, Lucia returned to school very distracted. Macy kept calling and texting her ever since she'd left their planned date, but Lucia acted as if she didn't notice. She already knew why Macy was calling. Lucia was still trying to think of a way to use Macy to frame Dalen. Even if Dalen fell in love with Macy, at least Lucia would be free. She hated to admit it, though, that the thought of Dalen in love with Macy was disturbing. Her plan had failed the other day. Dalen's sharp eyes had seen through Lucia's plans, even if he didn't say it explicitly. Lucia wasn't that stupid. Hey, what are you doing here? Come with me to cool off. Cole ran over with his face covered in sweat. Where to? she asked. The swimming pool. They walked to the pool together, and after changing into the swimsuit, Lucia jumped into the water. She imagined she was a mermaid as she swam laps under the water. Lucia was even more beautiful and graceful in the water. A natural beauty. After swimming for a while, Cole got out and rested by the pool. You know, Lucia, you really are beautiful, Cole said casually. Dalen is a lucky guy. Lucia's heart tightened and her face flushed when she thought about what happened in the restaurant yesterday. If she wasn't in the water, her whole body would have turned red. She didn't want to think about it. You're unusually quiet. Is there something on your mind? Cole asked. I tried to set up Dalen and Macy yesterday, Lucia admitted. Cole was interested. Did it work? No, said Lucia. Dalen saw right through me. (laughs) Oof. That couldn't have ended well, said Cole. Lucia nodded her head without a shred of hesitation. Is that your only option to get out? I mean, this isn't just a relationship between a man and a woman. It's a marriage. It can't be undone so easily, Cole reasoned. I don't know what I did to deserve torture like this, Lucia cried. Don't you have a saying? As long as you're here, you can rest easy. Just be in the moment and enjoy it while it lasts, said Cole, as he laid back in a pole chair and folded his hands behind his head. Lucia muttered to herself. She also wanted to be at peace with herself, but she only had three months. Lucia couldn't help but tremble at the thought of what would happen then. Raising her head to the sky, Lucia let out a long groan. She didn't want to be married. She wanted a chance to live. Macy had called Lucia so many times and sent so many messages, yet Lucia still hadn't replied. She was so angry that she slammed her cell phone. After secretly following Lucia for two days, Macy had finally found out that Lucia still lived in Dalen's mansion.
Episode 48, Lucia Did Something Mischievous. The more Macy thought about it, the more she felt that she had fallen into Lucia's trap. She thought about how weird Lucia was acting at their lunch the other day. However, it was already too late for her to bring up the fact that something was weird. Lucia might be ridiculing her behind her back. There was a burning rage in her heart. How dare Lucia tease her like this? Since there were no classes in the afternoon, Lucia went back to the mansion after lunch. Dalen was definitely not at home. Lucia played with her phone in her room for a while before deciding to take a nap. When she woke up, she felt a little hungry, so she decided to go down to the kitchen to find something to eat. However, on her way downstairs, she saw Jeff, who had just entered the hall. Jeff looked at her with a cold gaze. He didn't seem to be in a good mood as he merely glanced at Lucia's face and then shifted his attention elsewhere. Spencer immediately went up to welcome him. Mr. Jeff, you're here. I'm sorry, but Mr. Patrick is not home at the moment. So I'm not welcome if he's not here, Jeff asked, looking at Spencer coldly. Spencer immediately lowered his head even more. Of course you are. I'll pour you some tea right now. Jeff was bullying others as soon as he came in. Lucia liked Spencer and John quite a bit, so she was angry at Jeff for treating Spencer like that. Lucia turned around and walked towards the tea house. She didn't want to talk to Jeff. But when John saw her walking past, he asked, Where are you going, madame? I'm hungry. I thought I'll just quickly check the kitchen to find something to eat. Oh, you don't have to worry, ma'am. I'll fix something up for you to eat, John replied courteously. I'll tag along, Lucia said, hatching a devious plan in her head. Lucia stood in front of the azure stone countertop in the kitchen and saw all kinds of tea-making tools and materials placed on it. When Spencer finished mixing the tea and turned around, Lucia quickly poured sour lemon juice into Jeff's cup. Then she put her finger in and spat twice in the cup. Are you okay, miss? Spencer asked, turning back around. I'm fine, Lucia smiled innocently. Spencer carried the tea out without noticing anything. Lucia sat down on the edge of the counter, swinging her legs proudly in the air. After Jean brought the food over, she put it into her mouth and carried the rest out as she watched Jeff. She had the satisfaction of having done something bad. Spencer handed Jeff his cup of tea. You're dismissed, Jeff commanded Spencer without a word of thanks. Spencer put down the cup and retreated to the corner where he could be instructed at any time. Jeff slid his hand a few times on the screen of his phone. Then he picked up the cup of tea in front of him, looked at his phone, and took a sip. The liquid slid past his lips and he swallowed it. Jeff's gaze darkened a little as he looked away from the screen. It landed on the teacup. After a moment, he said, Interesting, and took another sip. Lucia couldn't help but chuckle before she retreated back to her room. A little while later, when Lucia came out, Jeff was no longer there. She inquired Spencer about Jeff. Where's Jeff? He's gone. Did he drink that cup of tea? Half. Lucia could hardly contain her giggle. Jeff drank the tea she spat in. The next day, Lucia was leaving from school as she saw someone she didn't expect to see. She still hadn't answered Macy's texts, so when she saw Macy waiting for her, she turned around and walked the other way. Lucia! Macy chased after her. Lucia gritted her teeth and could only turn around. With a surprised expression, she asked, Why are you here? You didn't answer my calls and texts. I was worried that something might have happened to you, so I came to see you, Macy replied. Episode 49, Cat Fight If you have something to say, just say it, Lucia said, straight to the point. She wasn't in a very patient mood. In any case, Macy was of no use. Lucia gave her a golden opportunity and she had let it pass her by. She didn't feel any guilt towards Macy. It was just that the last time I ate with you guys, I didn't upset Dalen in any way, did I? I left without saying anything because I was nervous, Macy said shyly. Lucia let out a long sigh. Macy, you really like Dalen, don't you? 
Macy also felt that her patience had reached its limit after she had been asked this question. Anyway, it wasn't just a day or two with Lucia. The conflict between them was as wide as a river, so no matter what, it couldn't be fixed. She said, Yes, I do like him. I like him very much. Way more than you do, apparently. Why are you by his side and not me? Lucia rolled her eyes. But I already gave you a chance. Are you still blaming me if it didn't work out? When Macy heard Lucia's words, the anger in her heart almost burned to the top of her head. Lucia looked at Macy's restored, vicious face, all pretext of kindness gone. Although she didn't feel awkward anymore, she didn't want to waste time talking to her. This is why Lucia had always been unable to get on good terms with Barbara and her daughter. No matter what you do, people always think it's a scheme. Although this time she did scheme, but all in Macy's favor, to say the least. Despite her failed attempt at trying to get Macy closer to Dalen for her own good, Lucia still couldn't bear to be around Macy for too long. She couldn't be bothered to waste her time with her anymore. She had to go back now. Lucia walked past Macy and went to the intersection to stop a taxi. Macy was so angry that her face turned bright red and a fire started burning in her heart. In the next second, she reached out her hand and pushed Lucia into the street. Ah! Lucia fell forward, unprepared. How could she have known that Macy was so crazy? It was impossible to guard against her. She fell in an instant, but everything looked like it was all happening in slow motion in her mind. She saw the cars on the road speeding towards her. Lucia closed her eyes tightly. The sound of the tires screeching against the ground exploded in her ears. Lucia's body tightened up and her head hit the ground. Her thoughts abruptly scattered and a wave of dizziness followed. Lucia lay on the ground. The weak sunlight was extremely glaring, and even opening her eyes was painful. The world felt like it was spinning. She reached up to hold her head to try and stop the dizziness, but it didn't help. She even felt the wetness on her hands and the strong smell of blood. Macy snapped out of her daze when she saw the blood. She didn't want to kill Lucia after all, especially so blatantly. Would she go to jail? Are you okay? The driver who had hit her ran around the car and knelt by Lucia. Lucia, who had just recovered from her dizziness, sat up and pointed at Macy, who was still staring blankly at them. The driver immediately said, Why aren't you coming to take her to the hospital? I saw you pushing her. Lucia didn't want Macy to be the one to take her to the hospital. She was so angry at Macy she could have punched her but she couldn't argue because her head hurt so bad. Macy accompanied the driver to take Lucia to the hospital. On examination, it was a mild concussion, not a serious one, and a shallow head wound. The wound on her forehead was bandaged, and her face was still pale under the white gauze. She leaned back on the bed, not wanting to open her eyes. Lucia, don't play dead. If I really wanted you to be hit by a car, I would have made sure that you were hit by a car. So stop making me look like the bad guy here. Macy said, giving up her veil of being the ideal sister. Lucia was confused. She definitely remembered Macy pushing her. But Lucia decided not to argue with her anymore as she felt her head throbbing. Seeing that Lucia did not make a sound, Macy thought that she had really fallen asleep. But Lucia was still watching her through her eyelashes. She saw that Macy was slowly approaching the ring on her finger and was about to take it off. Lucia gathered her strength and kicked out with all her might. Ah! Macy cried as she fell back, holding her stomach. At that same time, the door to Lucia's hospital room was pushed open. Dalen appeared in front of her, anger and worry emanating off of him in waves. His cold face immediately turned gloomy when he saw Lucia's current appearance. When Lucia saw Dalen, she immediately withdrew her foot. Then, with a pained expression, she hugged her head and groaned as she leaned against the pillow. Dalen's expression changed. Call a doctor. He took Lucia in his arms and held her against his strong arms. Lucia leaned her head on Dalen's broad chest. The doctor rushed over, examined Lucia again, and told her not to move her head so much. 
After the doctor left, Macy felt that Lucia was obviously acting. How could Dalen not tell? After being examined, Lucia didn't want to be supported by Dalen, so she leaned back against the bed. Dalen saw that she was not looking well, and his expressions were cold and gloomy. He turned to Macy and asked, What was going on? I just wanted to help Lucia out of kindness, but she didn't know what was good for her, so she kicked me in the stomach. That's when you walked in, Macy complained, rubbing her waist pitifully. When Dalen turned his gaze to Lucia, she simply said, Macy pushed me into the street and I was hit by a car. I did not, Macy screeched. How could I push you? You're my family. I would never do that. Macy had already used money to buy off the driver, and there were no other witnesses. Upon hearing Macy's words, Lucia lost her composure and practically bounced up from the bed. Macy, you... Whoa, no need to get excited. Lie still. Dalen's rough voice echoed in every corner of the room, making both girls freeze. Lucia laid there obediently with a stubborn look on her face as she bit her lips. Seeing Dalen get mad at Lucia made Macy's heart full of joy, but it was just an illusion. The next words that came out of her mouth were as gentle as water. Mr. Patrick, I really didn't push Lucia. She's always had it out for me, ever since our parents married. If it weren't for the fact that she couldn't move, Lucia would have jumped up and kicked Macy again. This kind of sham behavior was typical with Macy, and Lucia already knew that everyone was going to believe her lies. Episode 50, The Healing Kiss Did Macy really bully you when you lived with her family? Dalen asked Lucia with a serious expression. Lucia was stunned. Did Dalen also believe Macy before he believed her? Lucia fumed. Yes. Then why is she still alive and well? Dalen asked. Lucia looked at Dalen's cold and unfeeling face in surprise. On the other side of the room, the gloating smile on Macy's face froze. Then she heard Dalen order sternly, Men, take this woman out of the room and report her to the authorities. She pushed Lucia into the road, causing her serious harm. Without saying anything, Spencer waved his hand and the two bodyguards came in and dragged Macy out. But before they got her out of the room, Dalen spun around and slapped her in the face. What are you doing? What do you want? I didn't do anything. Let me go. The sound of Macy struggling grew further and further away. While Lucia was still stunned by the sounds Macy made while being taken away, Dalen sat on the edge of the bed. His heavy body made the bed creak. He spoke calmly. Are you feeling comfortable now? Lucia didn't answer and just stared at him with disbelief. Dalen rubbed the back of her hand with his thumb and laughed. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm not going to kill her. Just going to teach her a lesson for hurting my wife. The tension grew thick around her, making it hard for her to breathe. For a moment there, Lucia wasn't able to make up her mind whether she should worry about Macy or how her heart skipped a beat when Dalen called her his wife so dearly. Lucia was speechless. However, she knew what Dalen said was true. Lucia could only imagine how miserable Macy was, but she deserved it. Lucia hadn't expected Macy to be so vicious that she'd actually push her into the street like that. If the driver hadn't braked on time, she would have died. Lucia could only hope that a trip to the police station would teach her a lesson this time. She just didn't know if Macy would complain to their dad, and if she did, who would her dad believe? Lucia felt depressed when she thought of her dad, but her jaw tightened as she came back to her senses and met Dalen's deep and cold eyes. What are you thinking about? He asked. His gaze was like a sharp arrow that was about to pierce into her soul. Nothing, she whispered. You are my woman. If someone tries to hurt you, they'll have to deal with me. Dalen's dark eyes were filled with anger. Lucia felt goosebumps all over her body. After sitting in silence for a while, Lucia felt her eyes get heavy. She'd been through a lot, and she was exhausted. She fell asleep not long after. It was dark when she woke up, but Dalen's tall figure was still in the room. Why are you here again? 
Lucia had just woken up and her voice was soft and scratchy. Dalen examined Lucia's face with concern. He didn't answer her question but said, Eat something. Only then did Lucia felt that her stomach was growling with hunger. She was adequately distracted and forgot about asking Dalen when and why he'd returned. But in reality, Dalen never left. Lucia was sleeping soundly. She didn't notice Dalen watching her the entire time, making sure that she was okay. Spencer brought some food in and laid it on Lucia's side table. When Lucia saw Dalen pick up a spoon to eat with her, she knew that he hadn't eaten yet either. But she still didn't ask why. Dalen, even after all he'd done for her, still felt unapproachable. Lucia examined the food, moving pieces of the soup around with her spoon. Dalen scooped a spoonful of ginger into her bowl. Lucia immediately told him, I don't eat ginger, and started to pick out the pieces. You need to. Ginger is good for healing, Dalen argued. Lucia spooned the food in her mouth, carefully avoiding the clump of ginger. Was there any limit to how controlling Dalen could be? He even had to have a say in what she ate. Lucia used her spoon to poke at the ginger and finally stirred it into the soup. Dalen's gaze went to her bowl. Lucia spooned the soup with the ginger into her mouth and carefully chewed and swallowed. To her surprise, the ginger actually brought out the flavor in the soup. She took another spoonful. After Lucia swallowed it, she opened her mouth and stuck out her tongue to tease Dalen and prove that she'd eaten it. Her pink lips wrapped around her tongue. This unintentional action looked so cute that it stirred something in Dalen's heart. Lucia noticed Dalen's reaction and noticed his Adam's apple slid up and down as he swallowed hard. He put down the spoon in his hand and Lucia closed her mouth. The tension in the air was back and Dalen was leaning forward. By the time Lucia processed what was happening, Dalen's mouth was on hers. She parted her mouth in response and felt the tip of Dalen's tongue explore her mouth. Lucia was stunned, her body buzzing in response to this gentle kiss. Their breathing quickened as Dalen leaned into her and Lucia clutched the front of his shirt, pulling him closer. Dalen didn't kiss her for long as he was afraid that he'd hurt her while she was in such a delicate state. He pulled back so their faces were just a few millimeters apart. I never really learned how to kiss. Did you? I think I still need more practice, Dalen said in a soft, teasing voice. Lucia, who was still gasping for air, responded, Well, if you're not satisfied, you can go find someone else. Even though she knew he was teasing, she still felt self-conscious. What kind of person would kiss her like that and then give her critique? But she did let him kiss her, didn't she? Don't worry, Lucia. I can teach you. Dalen's eyes sparkling as his gaze traveled around her face, as if trying to memorize every freckle. Lucia's face turned red with embarrassment. I don't need it, she argued, even though she knew that she probably did. Dalen gazed at her with a calm and humorous expression, making Lucia feel that she had nowhere to hide. She lowered her head and continued to eat without looking at him. After a while, more ginger appeared in her bowl. Lucia looked up and gave Dalen a small smile. When Lucia woke up the next morning, Dalen still hadn't left. In fact, the whole time she was there, she never saw him leave. Everyone always said that Dalen was heartless and unfeeling. But then why would he stay? Lucia was starting to suspect that perhaps she had misjudged Dalen, but she was still careful with her heart. Dalen could change moods in an instant, and she couldn't afford to let her guard down. Lucia was sure that this would be the night he would finally leave. Right? Episode 51, A Fight That Turned Nasty The next morning, Dalen still had not left. When Lucia woke up, he was lying down on the bed next to hers. His tall and well-built body barely fit in the bed. If you keep staring at me, I'll be forced to come over there. Dalen teased as he noticed her gaze. Lucia quickly turned her head and looked at the TV, which was playing reruns of I Love Lucy. Lucia was sure that his eyes were closed. How could he have known that she was looking at him? Dalen, are you going back to the house later? Lucia asked after some hesitation. I'll sleep here as long as you're here, he responded. 
You know, they do have nurses here. You don't need to stay. I'm well taken care of, Lucia argued. Dalen's head was resting on his sturdy arm with one leg bent, giving him an indescribable charm. His eyes opened and they shined with a cold light as he looked at her. Don't be touched. I'm just here to make sure you don't try to run off. Canceling the three-month deadline is the best way to repay me, though, if you're looking for ways to show your gratitude. Dalen gave her a devilish grin. You wish, Lucia said, as she lifted off her blanket and got off the bed to use the bathroom. However, in the next second, she was swept off the ground and into Dalen's arms. She protested, but he ignored her and carried her to the bathroom. Lucia looked uncomfortably at the toilet and asked, How did you know I was going to use the toilet? Lucky guess, Dalen answered. Lucia's face turned red as Dalen placed her on the toilet seat. She glanced up at him and said, You can leave now. Okay, but I'll be right outside the door, Dalen said. How am I supposed to pee if I know you can hear me? Just leave the room, Lucia said. Lucia thought it would take more effort to get Dalen to leave. But soon after she said that, she heard his footsteps go to the door and exit. As she relieved herself, Lucia's mind was racing. Was Dalen really as bad as she'd been thinking he was? Dalen had seen her kick Macy, so she pretended to be weak. But really, her head barely hurt anymore. But it was kind of nice to be taken care of. She flushed the toilet and washed her hands. But when she opened the door back to her room, Dalen was back. And he once again lifted her up and into her bed. Lucia felt embarrassed, annoyed, and humiliated. But with Dalen's cold and forceful attitude, it was impossible for her to resist him. He was just so strong. Dalen settled her on the bed and Lucia waited for him to let go. However, Dalen's arms were still around her and his voice was low and hoarse. He moved his hand to be directly over her heart. I can feel your heartbeat speeding up, Dalen said, giving her another handsome smile. Lucia's body shuddered, her long eyelashes fluttering. When she realized what Dalen was talking about, Lucia's face turned red from embarrassment. She became angry and said, You're, you're so close to me. But was it too close, Lucia thought? I love the sound of your voice, Dalen said. Lucia's face was deep red. Dalen looked down at her with a meaningful smile in his eyes. The feeling in Lucia's body was like overturning rivers and seas, gathering dangerously. She was nervous, though, and grabbed a cup of water to splash in Dalen's face. However, the water cup stopped just before she was going to dump it. Her wrist was encircled by Dalen's large hand. Lucia was astonished. She was actually caught? This is the first time someone's dared to throw water in my face, Dalen said looking curiously at the cup of water. Lucia was slightly apprehensive. After all, Dalen was strong and invaluable. Just when she thought that Dalen would get mad at her, he spoke up once again. You have so much courage. Perfect for the woman I like. Lucia didn't know what to say. Her whole world felt off balance. Dalen let her go and went to the bed beside her without another word. She always thought that the person who could match her stubbornness would be the person she'd marry. Was that person Dalen? And if it was really Dalen, then was the universe punishing her for something? Lucia could not accept this fact. Maybe she was just feeling pressured by Dalen because they were so close all the time, so she was acting crazy. Lucia turned her head and saw Dalen with his eyes closed. Once again, Lucia grabbed the water cup and moved toward Dalen with stealth and determination. Then she decisively started to throw the cup towards Dalen without any hesitation. But again, Dalen's hand flew out and grabbed the mouth of the cup, stopping her progress. Lucia stared at Dalen in disbelief as he put the glass of water on the side table. From beginning to end, Dalen didn't even open his eyes or say a word. Lucia went back to her bed and stewed in anger. How could she fail again and again? She had never failed before. Lucia was still angry when she finally fell asleep. Lucia's even breathing was coming from her bed when Dalen opened his eyes. He stared at her and then quietly got out of bed and stepped out of the room. Spencer was there waiting for him, 
he handed a phone to Dalen. This is a surveillance recording that was intercepted at the edge of campus, Spencer explained. The video playing on the phone clearly showed Lucia being pushed into the street by Macy. Dalen's expression was suddenly even colder than the hospital's morgue. The strength in his hands was even more terrifying, and the phone shattered into pieces in his hands. Dalen said in a gloomy voice, We need to show this to the police. Macy had been released from the police station after questioning and was in a miserable state. When she went back home, no one talked to her. It was only later, after repeated persuasion, that her parents let her inside. She went to her room and flopped on the bed and started to sob as if she was in shock. She couldn't cry too much or people would believe she was guilty. Her eyes were swollen beyond recognition. Barbara became even more annoyed when she saw this. I told you to go to the hospital, but you refused. You just cried here. How do you want me to fix this? At this moment, her dad heard the commotion and walked in. He was stunned when he saw Macy's completely changed face on the bed. Who is this? Macy, Barbara said in frustration. Macy, how did you end up like this? Her stepfather stared at Macy in disbelief. I, I, Macy couldn't say it out loud. Don't say anymore. Let's go to the hospital to take a look. You're obviously distressed. I'm not going, Macy said, burying her face back in her pillow. Barbara was both angry and worried. She said to Mr. Elrod, I've tried to persuade her, but she just doesn't want to go. How about calling the doctor over? He had no choice but to call the doctor. Sometime later, the doctor came to examine Macy and advised her parents to take her to the hospital if the swelling persisted until the next morning. Episode 52, Returning Home Doctor, she's not disfigured, is she? Barbara asked, more concerned about her daughter's looks than her well-being. What future would a girl have if she lost her pretty face? Probably not. It seems like she just had a fright and is having a bad reaction, said the doctor. Barbara and Macy were the only ones in the room after the doctor left. Macy, with the ointment on her face, had stopped crying. Her mood had calmed down, but she was still depressed. Talk to me, Macy. What's going on? Barbara asked again with great patience. No matter what happened, Mommy will help you. If, if I say Dalen hit me, can you still help me? Macy asked. You, what did you say? Barbara said in disbelief. At Dalen's parents' home, Victoria was fiddling with her plants in the room she'd been staying in. There were flowers and plants filling the room and spilling onto the balcony. Victoria's personal maid, Jerrica, brought the soup over. Miss, this should help your cold. She could smell the scent of medicine from a distance. Victoria glanced at her and said, The doctor also said that putting some flowers and plants in the room would be beneficial to my health and that I need to drink some medicine every day. Jerrica rubbed Victoria's cheek. Miss, what are you thinking about? No matter how good a person's body is, they can't withstand the occasional illness. Mrs. Physique is only slightly worse than others. Listen to the doctor and you'll get better quickly. Victoria knew that her body was strong, but she also knew that Dalen was the only one who could make her happy. Victoria took the soup and drank it all. Jerrica took the empty bowl and asked, Did Dalen divorce that woman? Not yet, Victoria said. Victoria noticed Jerrica's hesitation and asked, What's the matter? The woman is in the hospital, Jerrica answered. Victoria's mouth fell open. The hospital? I heard people talking when I went to the hospital today to get your medicine. It seems that woman's sister pushed her and almost caused a car accident. Almost. So that's it. Was there even a need for her to be hospitalized? Victoria said, rolling her eyes. Well, apparently the sister was in the hospital when Dalen showed up. He slapped her and handed her over to the police. He slapped her? Victoria echoed in disbelief. Yes. How vicious. It was a mess. I think she might have gotten a concussion. Jerrica shivered just thinking about it. 
When Victoria heard this, her expression darkened. She was so angry that she jumped out of bed and started pulling branches and leaves off her plants. Jerrica trembled in fright, not knowing how to help. Miss, don't be angry. Your health is more important, Jerrica cried. Say, does Dalen care about that woman? Does he like her? Victoria was extremely flustered. It's, it's hard to say, replied Jerrica. If he really did like her, why didn't he tell everyone her identity? Besides, that woman is just a common university student. Maybe Mr. Patrick has his own agenda. He wouldn't fall for someone else with you as an option. But just like that woman from before... Jerrica stopped, knowing she had gone too far, but it was too late to take back her words. Victoria glared at her with a warning gaze. I don't care what kind of women Dalen was with before or how many of them. The last one must be me. Victoria's eyes were full of determination. Lucia's life in the hospital was boring. She didn't feel like a patient at all. After staying for two nights, she removed the gauze from her head. There were scabs on her fair and smooth forehead. It wouldn't be long before she was released. However, Dalen insisted that she had to continue staying and be under constant observation. This man was so controlling that it caused her hair to stand on end. Finally, during one of the rare moments when Dalen wasn't in the room, Lucia spotted her shoulder bag, which was not too far away. She got out of bed and took out her cell phone before returning to her bed to play. However, before her game could load, the door to her room was pushed open. Lucia jolted and quickly stuffed her phone under the blanket, lying down innocently. Then she looked over at the figure in the doorway and gaped in shock. It was Jeff. Why was he here? This man gave her a strange feeling. His eyes were cold, his face expressionless. It was as if there was no warmth left in the room. Jeff slowly walked in, and he looked at Lucia with a faint smile. Lucia panicked and laughed dryly. <laughs> Are you here to find Dalen? He went out. Since you're here, though, why don't I pour you a cup of tea? My favorite is lemon-flavored tea, Jeff said quietly. Lucia's expression went slightly stiff, and suddenly Lucia knew that he knew about what she'd done to his tea before. But even though she was guilty, she still had to pretend that she didn't know anything. I don't have any lemons here. Sorry, she said with a nervous smile. Don't tell me that you weren't doing that just to get my attention. Lucia was confused at his accusation. What's going on here? A low, cold, and hard voice boomed. Lucia snapped out of her daze and looked at the tall figure that had walked in. Dalen, finally. After he came in, his sharp gaze swept over Jeff and Lucia. Like a blade, it emanated a cold light. Lucia projected an innocent expression, blinking her eyes. I was looking for you. Jeff's expression did not change. After the two men left, Lucia continued to lie obediently on the bed. She thought the two of them would talk for a long time, but Dalen came in just moments later. He sat down on the sofa and crossed his legs. The expression on his face was unreadable. He's gone? Lucia asked. Do you care? Dalen was expressionless. Of course not, she answered. Then why do you want to know? Dalen's face did not look good. Isn't he your friend? That's why I asked. He's not my friend, Dalen said harshly. Lucia looked down at her hands. What were you talking about? Dalen asked. He seemed to want to know everything. Nothing. I just told him that you weren't there and that it would be a while. I asked him if he wanted some tea, and he said no. And then you came. That's all. Lucia didn't dare tell him about what Jeff had said right before Dalen came in. She didn't even know what he had meant anyways. Lucia felt that Dalen was too uncertain, not to be trifled with. At that moment, her phone rang. The sound came from under her blankets. Lucia saw Dalen's expression go dark, so she silenced the cell phone under her blanket. Lucia stayed in the hospital for three more days and two nights before returning to the mansion. However, this didn't mean that she could immediately return to school. 
She would have to rest at home for two more days to avoid any side effects. Dalen's order was firm, so Lucia had to stay in the mansion. Episode 53, That's Enough. After dinner, Lucia stayed in her room and called Cole. I'm almost done with my recovery. I can go back to school in two days. Lucia put her cell phone in front of her and turned on the speakerphone. As she spoke, she chewed on a piece of fruit. Is it serious? Didn't you say you were fine at the hospital? Why can't you still come to school? Cole asked curiously. I feel fine, but Dalen won't let me go to school. But... You can come to the mansion to see me. Lucia chewed and swallowed the fruit. <laughs> With Dalen over there, I wouldn't make it close to you. Lucia and Cole chatted for a while before hanging up. Lucia thought about it. Her father hadn't called her in the past few days. This meant that Macy did not tell him about what happened that day. Her dad didn't know that she had been in the hospital. Their broken relationship was like a stone in her heart. It was no longer itchy or painful but rather uncomfortable. The ringing of her cell phone brought her thoughts back to reality. As soon as she looked at the caller ID, she saw it was Axel. She quickly threw away the fruit in her hand and straightened up in bed. She took a deep breath before answering, Hi, Axel. I heard you were hospitalized. What's wrong? Axel's gentle voice was a welcome break from Dalen's hoarse and deep voice. His worry made Lucia's heart warm. It's just that my head was hit. A slight concussion. I'm fine now. What hit you? Axel asked. The car, Lucia responded. Axel's voice sounded strained and full of worry. Did you not look for cars when you were walking? This is the second time, you know. You need to be more careful. Lucia remembered that she and Axel met because she was almost hit by a car. All kinds of feelings lingered in Lucia's heart. What's wrong? Axel asked after Lucia didn't respond. Nothing, she said. I just remembered the first time we met, and I almost got hit by a car. You saved me. Yeah. Looking at you, I wondered if all the beautiful women around the world were as careless while walking down the street as you. Axel's words made Lucia feel a tinge of shyness. For a moment, she couldn't believe that Axel thought she was beautiful. Was Axel trying to flirt with her? Lucia thought to herself. The memory made her feel like she was a teenager, freshly struck by the Cupid. Well, I'm glad you're fine now. Go to bed early tonight. Don't stay up late, Axel said. Hmm. I will, Axel. Good night. She was lying curled up on the bed, dispirited, with her back facing the window. She still felt that Axel was the man for her. He was so gentle and understanding. Exactly the opposite of Dalen, who was also so sporadic and unpredictable. Compared to Axel, Dalen had more power and money, but Lucia didn't care. She preferred Axel's softness. Axel said she should sleep early, but Lucia couldn't fall asleep after receiving his call. Since Dalen was out on business, she thought she might as well play with her phone. She played until 11 p.m. when she heard footsteps outside. Lucia's nimble fingers froze and she immediately threw her phone under the covers, turned off the light, and jumped into the bed. As soon as she was settled, she heard the sound of the door opening. Dalen turned on a lamp and stood in front of the bed, watching Lucia. Lucia remained motionless, pretending to be asleep. Then the light turned off and the door closed. Lucia rolled over and opened her eyes to look at the dark room to make sure that Dalen was gone. She heaved a sigh of relief and said to herself, oh, You scared me to death. Lucia thought about it for a moment. She still hadn't finished her game, so she got up from the bed and started looking for where she threw her phone. However, the hand that was about to reach for her phone froze. With a shocked gaze, she saw a pair of long legs and a tall and straight figure standing by the door. Lucia's heart almost stopped. This... Didn't Dalen just leave? He tricked her. Do you want to come to my room yourself, or do you want me to carry you? Dalen's voice was low and seductive. Why should I? I sleep so well here. She yawned. I'm still so sleepy. Lucia fell back onto the bed. She closed her eyes and let out a soft snoring sound. Lucia, who had her eyes closed, 
did not hear Dalen leave. Naturally, he didn't dare to move. Just as she was starting to wonder if he had actually left, she felt him lie next to her on the bed. Lucia opened her eyes in shock and met Dalen's deep gaze. The moonlight softly outlined his cold, angular face. You... what are you doing? Lucia asked with a shaky voice. What do you think? Dalen's voice was low and hoarse as he asked in a devilish tone. His large hand reached for her arm and he ran it down her body, reaching under the blanket. Familiar with the way his hand felt, Lucia's heart tightened. She could feel his palm pressing against her hip. It was solid and confident. It can't be like this. Lucia's breathing became erratic and her face flushed. Every cell in her body was struggling between desire and restraint. Why not? Dalen asked. The scorching heat from his hand swept through Lucia's sensitive nerves. Lucia trembled. Before she could recover from the trembling, Dalen's other hand cupped her face, calming her. Lucia moaned as one hand stroked her cheek and the other reached her thigh and pulled her leg up. Her face was flushed like a beautiful sunset. Dalen's gaze darkened a bit more. I want... I was just going to sleep, Lucia said, trying to stifle another moan. Sleep? How could you sleep now? Dalen asked. No. Really, I was just getting ready to sleep. Lucia refused to admit how much she wanted him to stay. If she admitted it to him, he would never let her hear the end of it. Then what were you doing just now? Dalen's voice was hoarse and his breath was clear and heavy. What did I... Before Lucia could finish her words, she saw Dalen take out her hidden phone. Dalen didn't seem to have any intentions of pressing her further on the topic. He just turned the phone off and put it back on the side table. He was closer now and his hand moved to the back of her head, bringing it towards his. Lucia could feel every part of her body, and the places where Dalen touched were warm. His touch was electric. Dalen moved the hand on her thigh back up to her hip, pulling on the waistband of her pajamas. She took a deep breath and smelled the shampoo he used, a deep, woodsy smell that made her lightheaded. Dalen started to reach under her waistband, and her mind snapped back into focus. She moved her hand to his and guided it out and above the covers before he went too far. That's enough, Lucia said, trying her best to sound stubborn, like one word from him wouldn't melt all her resolve away. Dalen was definitely a dangerous species. Are you sure? Dalen whispered into her neck, softly biting her. Waves of heat were rolling up Lucia's body. Mm-hmm. Lucia groaned, unable to get out anything else. Okay. Dalen laughed as he shifted away. Episode 54, A Sneaky Night at the Bar Lucia tried her best to ignore Dalen's smile, but it was so beautiful, his white teeth shining in the darkness. She gritted her teeth to keep from reaching out to him. Dalen had enjoyed seeing Lucia's body reacting to his touch. He couldn't help but feel happy about the fact that Lucia was finally beginning to like him as well. He'd originally just meant to cure her habit of staying up late, but he underestimated how intense her reaction would be. Dalen stood up. His hands were still buzzing from the feeling of Lucia's body. His eyes were dark and seductive as he looked back down at Lucia. He could tell she was fighting her instinct for wanting him to leave and her desire for him to stay. His voice was still hoarse. Sleep well, Lucia. Then he left the room. After hearing the door shut, Lucia released her body and slowly turned around. There was no sign of Dalen. Looks like he really left, she thought, almost disappointed. Her cell phone was on the nightstand. The next day, Lucia finally went back to school. The doctor had told her that if she wasn't feeling well, she could just lie on the bed in the nurse's office, but Lucia was feeling better than ever. Weakness and lying in bed all day really wasn't her style. Lucia sat down for her next lecture and rested her head in her hands. She couldn't stop fantasizing about last night, about what might have happened if she had let Dalen kept going. Cole nudged Lucia. What are you doing? Lucia raised her head and Cole saw the shallow scar on her fair forehead and asked, Are you all right? 
It's done. It's done, Lucia said, trying to cover the scar with her hair. Does your head still hurt? Cole was puzzled. No, or at least not because of that, Lucia said, a far-off look in her eyes. Lucia had her troubles. She couldn't say that her heart was slowly moving toward Dalen, right? So what happened to Macy? Cole was upset, not knowing how to help. She got slapped by Dalen and sent to the police station. Lucia had told Cole the reason why she was hospitalized. She and Cole had always talked about everything. Seriously? Yeah, it wasn't bad though. I heard she got off pretty easy, Lucia said. That kind of person should be locked away. I can't believe she pushed you in front of a moving car. If the driver didn't break in time, you'd be dead, said Cole. I know, Lucia responded. Cole now had more respect for Dalen and how well he'd taken care of Lucia. Lucia had never felt that a man with power and influence like Dalen, who had his pick of women, would care about a girl like her. Dalen is just so overbearing. Lucia said. When Cole heard her words, he couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> Have you laughed enough? Lucia frowned slightly. You hit the nail on the head. He is definitely overbearing. Cole finally retracted his smile. But isn't that nice? I mean, he did stay at the hospital the whole time you were there. Didn't Dalen scare you off when you tried going for lunch? That doesn't mean anything, Cole smiled. Let me ask you, why don't you like what Dalen did? Cole asked. If you compare Axel with Dalen, which one do you like the most? Lucia asked curiously. Cole thought for a moment and said, Axel is gentle and refined with the style and manner of a gentleman. He paused for effect. Therefore, I choose Dalen. <laughs> Lucia smacked his arm. As the two of them were speaking, a figure appeared in front of them. Lucia raised her head to take a look before quickly lowering her head and continuing to look down. The guy was the one who had tried to hit on Cole a few days ago. What's up? Cole asked. Come to the bar with me tonight, the guy said, rather domineeringly. Just the two of us? No, I've got another friend coming. You can bring your friend along if you want, the guy said. I'd love for you to come, but if you don't want to, though, you don't have to. Cole was puzzled. Either way, I know that you like me. If you don't come, it'll just mean that you're too afraid to let your feelings show. With that, he left. He wasn't only demanding, but also narcissistic. Cole looked at Lucia's shoulders shaking with laughter and said with an annoyed expression, it isn't that funny. Lucia raised her head. There was not the slightest trace of a smile on her face. She was completely expressionless. It was as if the shoulder shake just now had been an occasional disorder of the body. His acting is definitely good enough to enter the film industry, Cole said, shaking his head. He mocked the same domineering tone as the guy and said, Come with me to the bar. You're really going? Lucia asked. Why not? I don't actually like him, though, so you have to go, too. Did you forget that I was caught there by Dalen the last time? Lucia asked. I haven't forgotten, so we'll only stay for a while, and then we'll leave. You can't not go. Otherwise, others would really think that I like him. Cole mimicked the guy again as both of them shared a good laugh. At 5 o'clock, just as she was about to call the mansion, Lucia's cell phone rang. The caller was Dalen. Lucia's heart tightened. Hello, she answered. I'm not going to be at dinner tonight, Dalen said. When will you be back? Lucia asked. The other side went silent for a moment, then said, It might be a little late. Do you think you'll survive without me? Just say the word and I won't go out. Lucia gritted her teeth. The later you get back in the evening, the better, she said. After hanging up, she called Spencer and informed him about Dalen and her dinner plans. She didn't bother going into much details, thinking that maybe they would assume that she went out with Dalen and wouldn't ask questions. She didn't want them to report to Dalen. At night, the lights in the street were bright. There were a total of six students, including Lucia and Cole. 
Other than the two of them, the rest were all seniors. It was better to enter the bar, since the lights were dim and she could forget herself for a while. Before they could take their seats, a man who seemed to be a bit drunk stood in front of them. His eyes dimmed and his face flushed with alcohol. Just as Lucia was about to get annoyed, the man asked, Are you here to see Mr. Patrick? Lucia was stunned and shook her head. I didn't expect it even after so many years have passed. You haven't changed at all. The man clicked his tongue in wonder. Episode 55, A Ghost from the Past or Present Sin? The man kept staring at Lucia. I know it's been a long time, but you don't recognize me? He paused, and when it was clear Lucia wasn't going to answer, he said, You don't know me, do you? I met you years ago, when you came out here to eat with Mr. Patrick. Lucia was even more stupefied. Years ago, she didn't know Dalen. How could she have gone out with him? Seeing that this person had drunk quite a lot, Lucia thought that he must have mistaken her for someone else. I don't know you. You have the wrong person. Lucia ignored him. It's impossible to be wrong. If you don't believe me, we can just ask Mr. Patrick. Dalen is here? Lucia asked nervously. That's right. In the VIP room, the man answered. Cole, who was beside her, tugged her sleeve and said, Go take a look. Let's see what Dalen is doing here. Before Lucia could say no, the man dragged her into Dalen's room. When the door opened, Lucia looked in and saw Dalen, who was sitting among several men. He was lazily sitting on the sofa with one of his legs propped on the low table. His long legs were eye-catching. There were also a few heavily made-up women accompanying them. One of the sexy-dressed women squatted at Dalen's feet and poured him a glass of wine. Dalen's eyes widened when he saw Lucia. While Lucia was also stunned, she was excused towards Dalen by the man beside her. Mr. Patrick, tell me, haven't we all eaten together in the past? She said that she didn't know me, so she must have forgotten. The man refused to give up. Dalen's expression turned cold and the atmosphere heavy. All the sober people felt Dalen's shift in mood. Lucia found herself falling short of words. She was unable to understand everything that was happening right now. Take him outside and get him sober. Dalen instructed his guards. Spencer got the bodyguards to drag the man out. The man still didn't understand. Mr. Patrick! Mr. Patrick! What did I do wrong? Don't you know me? Lucia was standing beside the woman kneeling next to Dalen. If she looked down, she could almost see straight down the woman's open blouse. Even if Dalen was sitting, even if it was just out of the corner of his eyes, Lucia knew he would still be able to see. Apparently, the so-called not coming home to eat meant coming here to have fun. However, Lucia, who also came here to have fun, was preparing to make the first move. If I hadn't found you here, I wouldn't have thought you would do such a thing. Dalen still had the cigarette in his mouth as he looked up slightly. He gulped hard and a low voice came out. I didn't do anything. Oh, and who would believe that? I have eyes, don't I? I can see what's happening here. At this moment, Lucia felt as if she had caught her husband with a mistress. Other than Dalen and Lucia, the others were like a still background wall. They didn't dare to make any sound. They only broke out in a cold sweat for this bold girl defying Dalen. They had never seen anyone who dared to talk to Dalen like this before. Say what? You can play dumb, but I'm leaving. Lucia picked up the wine the woman poured earlier and downed it in one gulp. Then she elegantly turned around and left the private room. As soon as she walked out of the room, Lucia panted like a puppy in the hot sun. The alcohol that Dalen drank was too strong. Everything was burning, from the tip of the tongue to the pit of the stomach. It almost burned her up. Cole found her in the hall. What's wrong? Is Mr. Patrick really here? Lucia was about to say something when she saw a tall figure chasing after her. I need to leave. Also, don't tell him that I came here to hang out with you. With that, Lucia didn't even look at Dalen and ran out of the bar. 
Cole silently retreated to the side of the bar. Lucia walked into the street, but an armored car was right in front of her, causing her to stop in her tracks. Someone gripped her arm and she was pulled to the car. Lucia knew who it was without even looking. Looking at the calm Dalen, who was also getting in the car, she started to go crazy. What? I don't want to ride in your car. If you can get past me, you can go home by yourself. Dalen's expression was lazy, but sharp in the dark. How could Lucia get past Dalen? He was so strong that he could hold her there with one hand. I want a divorce, Lucia said furiously. Why? Dalen asked calmly. You have a mistress, said Lucia. Who? The woman who was kneeling beside you just now. I just explained. I don't care. I don't care. Lucia interrupted Dalen. You let me down. I want a divorce. Dalen stared at her deeply, not saying a word. Dalen, are you afraid about me asking for alimony against the divorce? Don't worry. I'll go out clean. I don't want anything from you. Okay? Lucia asked. Dalen still did not speak. His eyes were calm. Fine. I'll even pay you for an alimony fee, okay? Lucia felt that this was the world's most costly transaction. Dalen was so rich. Why couldn't he just give her up? Say something. Give me a price, and I'll try my best to satisfy you. Lucia felt her eyes start to wet. Frustrated tears threatened to fall. She was about to lose her patience. Dalen's eyes were stern. He finally opened his mouth and said, Let's talk after you wake up from your drunken stupor. Lucia couldn't hold it in any longer. She rushed over, grabbed the expensive material on Dalen's chest and yelled, I'm not drunk. I'm very sober. While Lucia yelled, all Dalen did was stand there and take it. Lucia let her hands rest on Dalen's chest, her anger draining out of her. Dalen was extremely tough and tenacious. Dalen was not annoyed by Lucia's impudence. The light in his eyes caught Lucia's gaze. A devilish smile was hidden at the corner of his mouth, and he let out a soft chuckle. What are you laughing at? Do you agree or not? Lucia's grip tightened. How much are you going to give me for the breakup? Dalen asked calmly. I... I only have $20,000 in my bank. Or maybe $30,000? I'll give it all to you, Lucia said. She was the most aggrieved person in the history of divorce. Hmm, that's very generous, agreed Dalen. Then do you agree? Lucia smiled. I don't agree, he said simply. You! Lucia's head dropped down onto Dalen's chest wearily as she kept hitting Dalen, flaying her hands in all directions. Dalen let out a comfortable growl that made her blood boil. Lucia kept hitting him, grinding her teeth in anger until she finally ran out of energy. Episode 56, The Morning After Lucia's numerous efforts to hurt Dalen were all going in vain. No matter how hard she tried to hit him, her small size and build as compared to Dalen was failing her every time. You know you can hurt me in a satisfactory way too. Satisfactory for both of us? Dalen remarked in a teasingly flirtatious way. This caused Lucia's body to tremble. The mere thought of being risque around Dalen gave Lucia a weird tingling all over her body. But she knew better. Not particularly. Lucia's voice sounded like she was acting coquettishly. Her petite face was flushed like an apple. It seemed like she couldn't handle Dalen's strong liquor. But Dalen was also acting irrationally. Mm, I'm sleepy. Don't forget about the divorce. If you agree. But Lucia was quickly losing consciousness. And before she could get the words out, she passed out on Dalen's chest. Lucia slept very comfortably. Next day, when she woke up, her first thought was how very comfortable her bed was today. She felt warm and protected for a change. Wait! Lucia's long eyelashes trembled as she lifted them up. A man's face was right in front of her. Lucia's mind went blank for a moment. A few seconds later, she bolted up like a spring. 
Despite there being clothes on her, Lucia felt quite exposed and felt the need to cover herself with the blanket. Why are you in my bed? Lucia questioned loudly. Dalen looked at her lazily. This is my room. Lucia looked around. Her heart trembled. This was Dalen's room. Why was she here? She tried to remember the night before. She seemed to have gone to a bar and met Dalen because a man who served drinks at the bar told her something about her hanging out with Dalen before. And then she saw Dalen with a woman. The moment she recalled the face of that woman again, an unknown emotion crept through her nerves. That fact from her past was the last thing on Lucia's mind at the moment. And then she got into the car. And then... You were so enthusiastic last night. Dalen gave her a presumptuous look. What? Lucia could not believe her eyes and ears. Dalen lifted up the blanket. On the left side of his chest, his skin had bite and scratch marks up and down his torso. Lucia didn't want to believe the fact that she gave in to her carnal desires and slept with Dalen. She couldn't have. She knew better than this. She wanted a pass out of this marriage. Dalen gave her this pass last night. She couldn't have ruined it all by sleeping with him. The fact was that she couldn't recall that the marks on Dalen's body was a result of her unfiltered anger, and Dalen seemed in no mood to put her out of her misery. He wanted to play. That's not possible. I couldn't have given you those marks. You are lying to me. Oh, sure. I was attacked by a wild cat. Dalen teased Lucia. I think it was some other woman who did this to you, and now you're trying to blame it on me, Lucia argued. Immediately realizing that she wasn't in the same clothes as she wore last night, her face turned crimson as she continued questioning, How did I get in my pajamas? How do you think? Dalen said, making Lucia even more frustrated. Did you change my clothes Lucia was furious, but Dalen didn't respond. Sometime later at the breakfast table, Dalen was eating without a worry in the world. Lucia was not the type of person who got drunk easily, but after drinking Dalen's glass of wine, she fell drunk almost immediately. She vowed to never touch his wine in the future. After breakfast, a black card appeared in front of her. Lucia was stunned. It was a credit card? She raised her head and asked in confusion, What's this? In the future, if you need money, just swipe this card. Due to the surprise and shock, Lucia asked again with uncertainty, This card, for me? Yes, answered Dalen. To use any way I want? Lucia asked. To use any way you want, Dalen said. Why did Dalen suddenly give her money? Was this a test? Or did something happen last night that she doesn't remember? Did he mention money last night? This was the last thing that Lucia expected. But then a strange thought occurred in her mind. If she really spent a lot of money, would he get mad enough to divorce her? Lucia thought it was worth a try. That way she would have her escape. All right, I'll accept it. As Lucia spoke, she put the card into her pocket. She had no intention of being frugal. Dalen looked at her with interest. Later, Lucia met Cole at school. Cole, I'll treat you to a meal. Lucia waved her small hand in a straightforward manner. Why? said Cole, coming over to her. I really can't eat the food in the cafeteria one more time. Let's go, Lucia said. But you've always been a frugal person, haven't you? And now you want to take us both out for a fancy lunch? Cole looked at her suspiciously. Come on, let's go. I'll treat you to food today, Lucia said, dragging him away. The two of them walked off campus, and after walking for a distance, they found a good restaurant. Inside, the two of them sat by the window. The waiter stepped forward. What would you like to eat? What do you have here? Lucia asked. We have all kinds of pasta here. The waiter gave her the menu. There's no need to look. Two bowls of the most expensive pasta, please, Lucia said. The waiter stared at her to see if she was joking. Cole just stared at her in disbelief. Seeing the waiter in a daze, Lucia asked, 
Is there a problem? No. Just a moment, please. With that, the waiter left. Cole came back to his senses and said, The most expensive pasta? Why are you treating me to the most expensive dish? As a good friend, Cole naturally noticed her acting weird. Not only was she treating him weird, her eyes were also glowing. There was definitely a problem. Did you go back to see Dalen yesterday? Cole smiled, not really caring. Yes, but all we did was argue. Lucia moved closer to Cole and lowered her voice. Tell me, what does it mean when a man gives you his credit card? Dalen gave one to you last night? Cole asked. Yep, said I could spend money as I please, Lucia answered. Cole asked solemnly, Does Dalen have any other friends? Yes, he does. Why is that important? Lucia asked. I want a friend like him who'd give me a card without a limit. No matter what purpose he has, I am willing. Cole's voice was desperate. Trust me, you don't want to be Dalen's friend. I don't even want to talk to him. Plus, Dalen and I have no hopes for the future. I don't like him. Lucia hoped that Cole would find a man he truly liked and trusted. You promised me to find yourself a man who is worthy of you, all right? Lucia suggested to Cole wishfully. What about the man we saw in the parking lot the other day? Cole asked excitingly, trying to hint towards the fact that he might already be interested in someone. Looking at his expression, Lucia was astonished. Who? Jeff? Oh, Jeff. Yes. Cole immediately became shy. Lucia was stunned. So what does Jeff do? Cole continued to inquire. He's a businessman in the Middle East. He doesn't come around much. You're too weird. Why do you even like men with that temperament? Lucia asked, puzzled. Episode 57, Shopping Spree. I like his depth, Cole argued. Lucia wanted to vomit before she even had a bite to eat. Deep? Did he use the wrong word? Can you introduce me to him, please? Cole asked. Why didn't you say that before? Lucia asked. I was embarrassed, Cole responded. And you feel better now? Lucia said. Well, is there a chance? Cole asked. I really don't know about that, Lucia said. You want to ask Mr. Patrick for me? See what kind of guy Jeff likes? Cole smiled embarrassedly. I, I'll ask when the time comes. Lucia couldn't even bear to listen to him anymore. Cole had an expectant look on his face. Could she really ask him again? Did she have the guts? Cole has horrible taste, thought Lucia. How could he like Jeff? Lucia hoped this was just a phase for Cole. She decided to park Jeff's thoughts aside and steer the conversation towards something else instead. While the two were eating pasta, Cole suddenly remembered the guy who had recognized Lucia from some time back. Oh yeah, did you figure out how you knew that man last night? Lucia had forgotten all about it. Oh, I think it wasn't anything much. I guess he mistook me for someone else, she said with a hint of uncertainty in her voice. Why would he recognize you so wrongly? Cole was curious. A few years ago, I didn't even know Dalen, let alone going out with him. And I'm pretty sure I would remember meeting a guy like Dalen. Do you think he confused you with some other woman? Cole asked. Dalen definitely doesn't lack when it comes to women. There must be some confusion only. Lucia scoffed. Are you jealous? Cole asked with a smile when he saw how bothered she was. Is that possible? Lucia rolled her eyes and continued to eat her pasta. After the meal, Lucia asked for the bill. When the waiter walked over with the bill, Lucia handed him the card. Sorry, we don't accept this card here. Ah! Lucia ended up having to use her own money. After leaving the restaurant, Cole could no longer control himself as he laughed hysterically on the streets. <laughs> that was hilarious! You should have seen your face. Lucia was so angry that smoke was coming out of her ears. 
She had excitedly run out to eat the most expensive noodles with an intent to get back at her husband, but ended up paying for them herself. Later, Lucia decided on another way to make Dylan pay for not agreeing to divorce her. Shopping. She left the campus and called for a taxi. Where to? The driver asked. Let's drive to Brand Street. You can take the longer way if you want. The driver thought she was being sarcastic, so he said, I'm sorry, ma'am, but conning people just for a few extra bucks is against my character. But I'm willing to pay you the extra bucks. I wish to take the longer route. As you please, ma'am. The longer route it is. Sometime later, they reached their destination when Lucia excitedly took her card out to pay for the long, long cab drive. Although she disliked spending extravagantly, spending Dalen's money to get back at him was surely proving to be fun for her. Lucia handed the cab driver her card. Um, I'm sorry, ma'am. I don't accept cards. Only cash, the cab driver insisted. Oh, and just like that, Lucia had to pay cash out of her own pocket. Again, her plans were definitely not working today. Lucia got out of the taxi disappointed. But when she raised her head and looked at the high-end luxury retail shops, her mood lifted. She would buy it all. Lucia was looking forward to seeing Dalen's expression. Lucia strolled from shop to shop buying the most expensive items, shoes, clothes, and jewelry. Her hands were full of shopping bags. After much difficulty, she finally managed to grab all the bags and drag them into another store that caught her eye. She needed a break with the bags. Lucia parked her bags down on the floor to let out a sigh of relief. It felt like she had unloaded a mountain. Should she ask someone to carry her things for her? Can you swipe your card when you hire someone to carry things? The shop assistant was surprised by Lucia's amount of shopping bags. She smiled and asked, What can I do for you? Can I leave these here? Lucia asked about the large bags at her feet. Of course. Please make yourself comfortable, the clerk said. At this moment, a deep voice came from behind her. Having fun shopping? Lucia turned around and saw the face that made her heart beat erratically. Axel. He was smiling at her. Lucia's face turned red as she looked at the items that she had bought. What should she do? What should she say? What would Axel think about her? This was definitely not the plan. She could say that she didn't buy it for herself. It had nothing to do with her. What if Axel thinks that she was a shopping addict? This was too unlucky. Lucia just wanted to somehow divert Axel's attention from all the shopping bags kept around her. Um, what are you doing here, Axel? I don't think they keep men's apparels here. Are you here to buy something for a woman? A girlfriend, maybe? The thought of Axel's girlfriend brought a deep sense of disappointment to Lucia. Maybe Axel never liked her because there was another woman he liked? Before Axel could answer Lucia's question, a woman's voice called him from behind. Lucia was stunned. It was Victoria. Victoria was also surprised to see her, especially when she saw all the bags surrounding Lucia. Oh, look who's here. Looks like you've shopped for an entire year, Victoria said condescendingly. <laughs> It's hard to come by, so I bought it all at once. Lucia laughed dryly. Axel smiled as he looked at her cute appearance. Oh, of course, why not? She deserves it all. No need to go easy on my brother. Axel chimed in, trying to rescue Lucia from Victoria's judgmental remarks. Lucia felt grateful about Axel defending her. Victoria's expression turned even worse. Tell me the truth. You only married Dalen for his money, right? I knew you weren't worthy of him. Victoria's tone was malicious. Um, Victoria, where are we on that dress you picked? Axel interrupted her before the fight got worse. Yep, let's buy it and go. I'm not in the mood to watch trash try on clothes, Lucia said pointedly. Axel gave Lucia an apologetic look. Lucia smiled at him briefly before saying, Actually, I think I'm also done for the day. I'll head back home myself. It was really nice seeing you, Axel. Likewise, Lucia. Let me drop you home, Axel offered. No, no, you don't have to go through all that trouble. I'll call myself a taxi. 
Lucia felt ecstatic inside with Axel's offer. Oh, I insist. I don't want my brother sulking over his wife having to take a taxi back home. Lucia agreed. When they were about to get in the car, Victoria said, Brother, why don't you drop her back and I'll take the taxi instead? I don't want to ride along cheap skates like her. With that, she pulled Jerrica along and went to take a taxi. Lucia was stunned as she looked awkwardly at Axel. Axel, on the other hand, didn't seem to mind. He picked up her bags and opened the passenger door. Get in. Only then did Lucia come back to her senses and get in the car. Miss, why are you riding alone? Wouldn't that be letting that woman off easy? Jerrica did not understand. Episode 58, The Raging Suspicions Say, maybe Dalen just hates her and wants to get her out of the mansion so he doesn't have to deal with her. Victoria's voice was weak, but her words were filled with astonishing calculations. Jerrica immediately understood. Miss, you're so smart. That must be it. How could Dalen marry a girl who didn't know anything? Only she was worthy of Dalen. In Axel's car, Lucia stared out the windshield, not believing her luck. What are you thinking about? Axel asked. Nothing. Thank you for driving me home. We're all family. No need to thank me. Even in the past, there was no need to thank me, Axel said easily. Lucia and Axel were quite close in the past. It was only after the marriage that things felt awkward. Why was this happening? Logically speaking, marrying someone and being friends had nothing to do with each other. Lucia thought it might be her own fault. I know. Lucia didn't know what to say. Are you upset? Axel suddenly asked. Huh? Lucia didn't understand. Victoria's personality is a bit... much, Axel said. So sometimes she doesn't get along well with others. My mother told me to take her out for a breath of fresh air today, and that's when we saw you. I believe you've met, haven't you? I wasn't at the last family dinner. Yes, we've met. Axel smiled and didn't say anything. After a long while, Axel asked, How are you and my brother doing? Eh, we're all right. Lucia didn't know how to reply. She couldn't say that she thought about getting a divorce every day and she even came here to try and splurge all his money in an effort to make him despise her. Axel didn't say anything else and focused on the road in front of him. Lucia thought about something and asked, Axel, I have something to ask you. Go ahead. Do you remember me ever meeting Dalen in the past? Axel's gaze flashed over to her. Why do you ask? Last night, a man insisted that I had dinner with him and Dalen years ago, you know, I didn't know Dalen a few years ago, Lucia explained. Maybe I was wrong, Axel said cryptically. Lucia's clear brows were furrowed because she didn't understand his answer. It wasn't the first time that Lucia felt this way. Jeff always said that her face was familiar. Then it was the man in the bar. Although Lucia felt that it was highly likely she was mistaken, she still felt it was strange. That was why she asked Axel. However, Axel also said that he was wrong. The car kept driving into the mansion and she saw Dalen's car in the driveway. The first thing Lucia saw when she got out of the car was Dalen's cold face. His black eyes stared at her. Lucia's heart shuddered. Axel brought out Lucia's bags. When he saw Dalen, he said, I was out shopping with Victoria and we ran into Lucia. I thought I'd give her a lift home. Dalen's cold face did not change at all. If you were with Victoria, why is it that I only see the two of you? Victoria went back in the taxi by herself, Axel said. There was no need to explain further. It was a very normal thing to say. However, in Dalen's eyes, it was as if Axel had accompanied Lucia shopping, accompanied her left and right, and then sent her home. Spencer went up to Axel and took the items from his hands, saying, Thank you. Axel smiled but did not say anything else. He turned around and got into the car. Lucia thought this was too serious. Dalen was still staring at her. 
What? Axel was only sending me home. Nothing else happened, Lucia explained with a trembling hand. You already have a man, yet you want others to help you? Dalen's face was cold. That's your little brother. There's no need to be suspicious of us. Dalen swung Lucia over his shoulder, carrying her back into the house. No matter how Lucia struggled, she couldn't escape. Ah! Lucia stumbled when he put her down and she fell onto the sofa. Lucia stood up from the sofa. Her nerves were tense as she faced Dalen, who was obviously still upset with her. You don't have to do this, okay? I'm telling you, nothing happened, Lucia muttered. But did you hope something would? Dalen's deep voice was edged with anger. Of course not. I was just passing by. Lucia was so shocked by Dalen's reaction that she retreated a few steps. Spencer walked over carefully. Mr. Patrick, it's time for dinner. The tension in the air seemed to have reached its limit. Dalen's voice exploded out of him. From today on, you are not allowed to take even half a step out of this house. Lucia was stunned and raised her head. Dalen's tall and straight figure had already turned to the dining room. Lucia came back to her senses and chased after him. Looking at him seated at the table, she asked angrily, What do you mean? You can't just go around commanding me like that. If you don't want me to leave the house, you might as well tell me not to eat. Remove her cutlery. Dalen's face darkened as he commanded the staff. John's hand paused as he looked at Lucia, who also had a frozen expression on her face. He silently took back the silverware. Lucia was so angry that she turned around and left, angrily stomping her feet on the floor. Lucia was pacing angrily in her room, mumbling abuses at Dalen just when her stomach growled with hunger. With one hand on her stomach, Lucia couldn't stop thinking about all her favorite dishes prepared for dinner. Who was Dalen to stop her from eating after all? Lucia was infuriated. She decided it was better to rebel than to starve, and so she walked back to the dining area where Dalen was still enjoying all the food by himself. Dalen noticed Lucia walking back and kept eating as if he did not notice Lucia or her anger. Lucia was initially angry, but the delicacies of the food that followed made her drool uncontrollably. She hadn't realized how hungry she was. Dalen was even more outrageous as he purposely ate all of the dishes that she liked. Lucia couldn't help but stretch out her hands. However, her wrist was stopped by Dalen. She met Dalen's eyes with stubbornness. You're not allowed to eat it, Dalen said. I will eat. Let go. Lucia didn't care. Only when she was full would she have the strength to fight against Dalen. Dalen pulled her arm over to him, and Lucia crashed into Dalen's firm chest. It was clear how much strength he had. Lucia was furious. She wanted to get down from Dalen with a flushed face, but she couldn't compete with Dalen. Episode 59, Let Me Out. Let me go! Lucia tried to free herself from Dalen's hold. Her face was so close to his, Dalen could see her watery eyes and her blinking long eyelashes. She was on the verge of tears. He let her go. Go to your room, Dalen said in a deep voice. What? Lucia said in disbelief. How dare he order her around? If you resist, then you'll regret it, Dalen threatened. What a tyrant, Lucia thought. Dalen was not a human, he was a monster. In the blink of an eye, the results of today's shopping spree could be seen. The clothes, shoes, and accessories had all been organized in her room while she was eating. Lucia found her receipts. She took it to her bed and used her cell phone to calculate the total. 340,000. Lucia could not believe she had spent all of this. She started counting again. It was still the same number. Did Dalen know she was so wasteful today? Did he just see what she bought and not know the price? Lucia felt the need to tell Dalen. Lucia took the receipts and found Dalen in his study. She slapped all of them in front of him at his desk. He glanced at her expressionlessly. Do you see that? Lucia asked. 
I see it. Dalen's gaze continued to focus on the computer in front of him. And you don't have anything to say? What do you want me to say? He asked. Lucia tapped the bottom amount with her finger and said, Look at this. $340,000. I spent it all in an hour or so today. Don't you have any thoughts? Nope. Dalen was still expressionless. This made Lucia anxious. $340,000. Not thirty-four. Dalen squinted as he stared at the adorable Lucia. Then he reached out his hand and circled around Lucia's neck landing on the back of her neck and pulling her closer to him. Lucia stiffened her neck, feeling that the hand had taken control of her body. She could only hold her breath. Your husband, me, deposits $100 million in this account every week, so you can feel free to spend as much as you want. If you can't carry everything, I'll have someone follow behind you. When you're happy, buy things. When you're sad, buy more things. I make this money for you, okay? His voice was low and serious. Lucia's entire body froze. She couldn't get that much money in a week, even if she broke her hand doing work. Dylan smiled indulgently and let go of Lucia's neck. Lucia stood there, looking at Dylan, staring at the computer expressionlessly. To be honest, no matter whoever the woman was, anyone would want to be treated like the queen of Dylan's world. Lucia admitted that she was a common person. For a minute, Lucia started contemplating being nice to Dalen for a change. She thought, why don't I stop tormenting him and just do what he says? However, when Lucia looked toward Dalen's stoic figure, she immediately gave up on that idea. She would never be happy here. Dalen almost seemed happy that she spent so much money, like it turned him on. Why did Dalen have that reaction? Could it be that she can make Dalen feel that way by spending his money? It seemed to be very strange. Lucia knew that some people had weird kinks, but Dalen's kink was way too weird. Are you so touched that you want me to sleep with you right now? Dalen's sinister and low voice sounded. Lucia shivered as she came to her senses. She glared at Dalen and said, I'm going to sleep on my own bed. (laughs) With that, she ran away. Lucia went back to her room and slumped on the bed. Thinking of something, she got up. She took out the card and looked around at all her new things. Lucia remembered that when she was young and finally saved some pocket money, she suddenly didn't know how to spend it. After buying what she wanted to eat, she found that there was still a lot left, and she didn't know what to buy next. That was how she felt now. She had access to so much money, but she didn't know what to do with it all. There's more money here than I've ever seen in my entire life. There was no way she'd be able to spend it all. Not only was Dalen not mad at her, he even got excited about it. Was there anything more abnormal than this? Luckily, she only spent 340000 If she spent $3.4 million, then how excited would Dalen be? How terrifying. Lucia rolled on the bed in distress. The next morning, she ate breakfast together with Dalen. It was no different from before. After eating, she told Dalen as usual, I'm going to school. Lucia picked up her shoulder bag and walked out, but she was stopped by guards when she arrived at the gate. What do you mean? Lucia was puzzled. Sorry, we can't let you leave. Mr. Patrick's order. The two guards stood in front of her, blocking her way. She was so angry that she threw her backpack and turned around to look for Dalen. When she entered the door, she almost bumped into his firm chest. After taking two steps back, she asked, Dalen, what do you mean by that? Why won't you let me out? Remember, you are not allowed to take even half a step outside of the house. My orders are all there is, Dalen lightly said. However, it infuriated Lucia to no end. I'm still a student. If I don't go to school, what else can I do? Be my woman. Lucia said nothing. Dalen walked past her proudly. Lucia immediately gave chase. I can be your woman and a student at the same time. It isn't an issue. I think it's a big deal. Dalen's long and narrow eyes were filled with stubbornness. After saying that, he turned around and got into a car. 
wait. Lucia had just opened her mouth, but before she could say anything, the car door closed right in front of her. She watched as the cars passed in front of her and through the gate. Lucia shouted, Come back! But the car disappeared behind the closed gates. Lucia rushed to the gate and was stopped again. After trying to force her way through for a long time, Lucia finally gave up and tried a new approach. Lucia returned to the hall and grabbed a passing servant. Episode 60, A Great Burst of Acting Lucia found the first person she could and asked, When Dalen isn't here, who is in charge here? Edward, the house manager, the maid answered. Very good. Lucia found Edward and demanded, I want to go out. Edward thought for a moment, then said, This is Mr. Patrick's order. We cannot overrule him. In the living room, Lucia called Dalen countless times, but no one answered. After that, she called Cole dejectedly. Cole, help me get a leave of absence. Why leave? Are you hurt? No, Lucia yelled in frustration. Cole's ears rang from her loud voice. It wouldn't simply be chest pain or something, or else she wouldn't be roaring so fiercely. Then what happened to you? I'm basically being abused here, Lucia said calmly. Edward, who was walking behind her, slightly lost his composure at her words, but walked past without a change in expression. What? Domestic violence? Heavens, are you okay, Lucia? Do you want me to call for help? Cole said, trying to remain calm. Lucia gritted her teeth and bit her lips while enduring the pain. It's not that. It's mental violence. What do you mean? Cole asked. Dalen won't let me leave the mansion, that's all, said Lucia. You're trapped there? So what did you do? You offended him? Cole asked. I offended him? Forget it. Anyway, I can't explain right now. Just help me request a leave of absence. I want to be quick. Lucia answered. I have a question, said Cole. What? asked Lucia. Is one day enough? If it's not enough, I can help you ask for a few more days, said Cole. Lucia had been trying to calm herself down, but Cole's question racked her nerves. After hanging up the phone, Lucia used her small hands to calm the raging blood in her chest. Dalen was too much. She thought he was just saying it, but he actually locked her up. I'll go on a hunger strike until you let me out. Lucia was furious at both Edward and John. She then turned around and returned to her room, feeling helpless as ever. John looked at the angry figure retreat to her room and asked Edward worriedly, Is she going to be all right? Call Mr. Patrick later, Edward said. After slamming the door, Lucia stayed in her room, determined not to go down for lunch. Anyway, that's what she said. When it was noon, John knocked on the door. Ma'am? Go away! I won't eat! Lucia played with her cell phone and bellowed angrily at the door. But ma'am, it's time for lunch. You're going to be hungry sometime. I'd rather starve to death, Lucia yelled. Edward walked over to the room. John said, She says she won't eat and rather die of starvation. Let's wait it out and see what happens, Edward said. About an hour after the typical lunchtime, Lucia's stomach started to growl. Endure it! You're not hungry! How long has it been? Lucia said viciously to her stomach. She continued to play her game, hoping to numb her senses with the game. The butler outside was also worried. It's not good not to eat. Edward could only call Dalen. Mr. Patrick, Lucia, madam, is not eating. She's that angry? Dalen asked. She said, she won't eat until you allow her to leave the mansion, said Edward. Dalen looked at his watch with a dark glint in his eyes. She won't be able to hold out for long. All of you go outside and put the food in the kitchen, Dalen said. Yes, Edward agreed. Edward hung up the phone and instructed the servants to go out and fix lunch. Once a person is hungry, their limbs become inflexible. Lucia couldn't even keep playing the game. She started to yell at her phone out of hunger and flung it to one side. Lucia knew there was a problem with her technique, but this was not all for Dalen. Her stomach rumbled again. 
When she stood up, Lucia felt dizzy. Should she sneak out to take a look at the kitchen? Lucia quietly opened the door and tiptoed out. It was quiet. When she went downstairs, she did not see a single person. Where did Edward and John go? The mansion was so big, there was always work to be done. Lucia seemed to be walking around the hall aimlessly, but in reality, her eyes were darting around. Then she drifted to the dining room, looked inside. Not only were there no servants, there weren't even dishes on the dining table. Dalen was bad, and so were his people. That's how it came about. After passing through the dining room, Lucia entered the kitchen. The first thing she saw was the pots of vegetables on the azir stone countertop that hadn't been cleared away yet. A fragrant smell assaulted her nostrils. Lucia swallowed her saliva. She quickly took a bite from the bowl. It was delicious. Lucia picked up a fork and picked up her plate to eat. She ate a few mouthfuls before drinking the soup. It was still warm. When the delicious food entered her stomach, she felt extremely satisfied. As she ate, she took precautions. She made up her mind. If anyone were to enter, she would tell them to look for the butler. After eating enough, Lucia wiped her mouth and wiped away the evidence before returning to her room. She passed through the main hall, went upstairs, and entered her room. She was proud that she was able to accomplish all of this in one go without anyone noticing. When Edward and John entered the kitchen, they saw the empty bowls. Pour out the rest, Edward instructed. Seems like Mr. Patrick understands Miss Lucia very well, John said. Just follow Mr. Patrick's instructions. Edward nodded and said. The kitchen had just been cleaned up when Lucia appeared. Mom, do you want anything? Edward asked. Do you not even care if I starve? Lucia asked. Edward and John didn't say anything as they looked at her seriously. What are you looking at? If you don't want me to starve to death, then hurry up and let me out. Lucia was overbearing. Let me tell you, if I starve to death, Dalen will blame you for it. Therefore, for the sake of your future, you should let me go. If Dalen blames you, just say that I sneaked out. I will never betray any of you. What do you say? Edward and John remained indifferent. Lucia's inner acting skills began to explode. She used her hands to hold her stomach and leaned against the wall, pretending as if she would collapse at any moment. Ah, uh, my stomach is hurting from being so hungry, Lucia moaned. Initially, John saw that something was wrong and was prepared to help her up. However, after hearing Lucia's first sentence, he stopped. It really hurts. Is my stomach eating itself? Perforated? Or a, a gastric ulcer that won't... It can't be terminal illness, right? Lucia squinted one eye and saw that the two stewards were unmoved. She continued to work hard, wailing and curling her lips. Oh God, I'm only 20 years old. The heavens are jealous of such a talent. Dalen, I feel very wronged right now. No one cares if my body is falling apart. Dalen, my stomach is hurting. Am I going to die soon? Can you come back and take a last look at me? Yes, came a low voice from behind her. <laughs>